not put those in her book either. He doesn't mean to have to put those in her book. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Today, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> oh man. It will be big time when we get a uh, skybox. We have one at home. Yeah, that's when it'll happen. <laughs> I tease Liz, I said. Uh, oh, what did I say? Oh, I was like, I was like, I was like, you didn't get a lineup yet, did you? And she goes, no. And I said, okay. She goes, I'm going to assume it's pretty None. similar. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Enough of one. <laughs> oh, I did this wrong. You go through this list of some people and you're going, man, I'm pretty much sure I've heard every one of those names. <laughs> as soon as I went through their starting lineup, I was like, I know everybody. 30 uh, seconds, guys. Thank you. Bringing you back in five, four, three, two, one. We welcome you back here to Assault in Washington. Matthew Zimmer, Randy Stickle here with you as we get ready for the Bulldogs and the Panthers going head to head in baseball action. As we've got the Bulldogs here in Asotan because, well, field's just not quite ready yet. We were joking with uh, uh, the grandmother of Cal Gregory, and we were talking to her, and she Daddy, said, uh, yeah. uh, she said, are we ever going to have a home game? And you and I looked at each other and went, well, we hope so. <laughs> yeah, it might not be this season, but right. there is summer ball, too, so we're <laughs> hoping we'll at least get it by then. But, you know, here again, you know, there's other places that have had difficulty, too. We're not the only places that have difficulty have. getting That's games right. in. But here down south, it seems to be their difficulties are a lot less as, well, just, what, was it about 12 degrees difference? from Colfax to Asotin today. Certainly felt like it. Well, I think actually somebody told me that, that that actually showed that that was the wood difference. That's so, a little, that's kind of crazy when you think about it. Yeah. That's an hour, 12 degrees is quite a bit, to be honest with you, and it certainly is in getting the field dry. So we don't know for sure yet uh, who will be the home team and who will be the away team just because of the fact that this was scheduled to be a Colfax home game, but... Uh, that will be, of course, determined once we get ready for first pitch. Bulldogs and Panthers, of course, we're at the home of the Panthers. Well, we had this with Springdale not very, just uh, last right. week. That's right. And in the first game, we said, well, it's Springdale's field, I guess. That, and they were home for the first game and not for the second. So, right. Um, <laughs> shows you what we know. Right. <laughs> That's why we've decided to not make the assumption yeah. this time around. <laughs> we'll get it figured out when the first batter comes up. And That's right. Then we'll let you know that when, when we know. Speaking uh, of the batters, we can give you the starting lineups. And, uh, Randy, you've got Colfax all ready to go. And, of course, that's the one we pay attention to the most. So I'll hand things off to you. And what we got four Colfaxes, one through nine, in the batting order. In the batting order, that would be Cal Gregory will lead a Surprise, surprise. These, these, these are very familiar names. But, anyway, in very familiar positions. Cal Gregory will be leading off again and catching again. Kyle Apple will be over third base. Parker Huber will be on the mound pitching to Cal. Over first base will be Nate Atkinson. Right field, Blake Bodie. Center field, Kieran Anderson. And left field will be Kellen Becker. So they got the outfielders all listed together. That's that's good. That helps us out. Nice. Mason Miller will be the designated hitter today. Lane Gindrich will be the shortstop. And then second base will be Evan Henning. And that's who Mason Miller will be batting for in the lineup when, uh, when it comes to his time. For the Soden Panthers, they'll be led off by their starting pitcher. That'll be Devin Fry. Followed by number two in the order, Josh Wilkinson, the right fielder. Elliot Marks, the catcher, will bat third. 
Noah Rensman will bat cleanup from third base. Number five in the order, Mason Hurlbert, the first baseman. Taryn Judy, the left fielder, will go sixth. Hunter Landris, the center fielder, will bat seventh. Carson Juries, eighth, the shortstop. And Dylan Landris, your second baseman for the Panthers, will bat ninth. So no DH for the Panthers, of course. Again, Randy mentioned the DH for the Bulldogs. Mason Miller batting eighth in place of second baseman Evan Henning. So as we get closer to first pitch, Colfax and Asoten going head-to-head -head for the first time this season. And Soton... Uh, one of the teams that you and I have talked about on our drives to and from some of our other games that uh, Asotin, one of the more competitive teams and one team that we assume will be the one, one of the met, one of the couple that could give Colfax some fits when it comes to the Southern Division. Oh, it certainly will be one of the teams. These, these are two teams that have matched up during the season uh, and had some great matchups, and we see the umpires getting out there, so maybe uh, we're getting half close here. But nevertheless, uh, yeah, there's no doubt about that. We've matched up against Asotin three years in a row in the postseason <laughs> yep. and uh, had different outcomes each year. Uh, last year, Colfax did better. A couple of years ago, it was Colfax sent a Soton home. That's right. Then the next year, a Soton beat Colfax. That's so, right. So then a little bit of splitting, kind of going back and forth. Two solid programs, especially when it comes down to baseball, but two solid programs when it comes down to any sport. We've had, well, we talked about three years in a row. We passed the football field. Yep. Three years in a row, we've had the postseason uh, playoff against a Soton down here. And those haven't turned out as well. Right. But nevertheless, for baseball, we've had some good good results. Yeah, some good rivalry between the Bulldogs and the Panthers on the baseball side for sure. And uh, Randy and I were there together two years ago when it was all of a sudden it was the first loss of the season. And then Colfax had to go play regionals uh, across the state, basically. And then... Uh, we ended up the state with yeah. And then last year, uh, Colfax getting the win. So it's been a little bit of a back and forth between the two. And so we'll see how this double header bout goes between Colfax and Asotin. We'll take one more break, and then when we come back, we've got first pitch coming your way from Asotin as the Bulldogs take on the Panthers next on 1450 KCLX and also online at listentothegame.com. Clear. Uh, do 90. I might be able to sneak another 30 in. But 90? Yeah. Okay, you got it. Did he take the field? No. No, we're on the outfield. We're huddled up. They're huddled up. I think those are there. I thought I saw somebody go in the dugout for them. Could be wrong. They're both huddled out there having their post. A little powwow. Yeah, Mark's going to be out. Tim's going to be behind. Yep. I'm sure that's what people are eagerly waiting. 30 seconds waiting for. Hey, EJ, add another 30. Add another 30, you got it. Perfect. We are home. I haven't taken the field yet. Nope. Ugh. You're tangled on Tony's court. 80% of the time. <laughs> it's either being stepped on or tangled up or... Yep. Ugh. Amen to that. <laughs> 15 seconds. Thank you. Your your headset cord is like any normal person's like headphones cord. Back in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... And we welcome you back to Asotin, Washington. Matthew Zimmer and Randy Stickle here with you as the Bulldogs charge off to the field as they will be your home team. So, again, here's how the defensive alignment marks up for the Bulldogs. Parker Huber will be on the mound pitching to Cal Gregory. Over at first base will be Nate Ackeson. Evan Henning will man second base along with Lane Gingrich at shortstop. Kyle Apple over on the hot corner at third base. Left field will be manned by Kellen Becker. Out in center field, of course, Kieran Anderson and Finally, out in right field will be Blake Bodie. The three do up for the Asotan Panthers. Devin Fry, the pitcher. Josh Wilkinson, the right fielder. And Elliot Marks, the catcher. 
And we talked about how, well, I don't know if tenuous is the right word, but just how close these matchups usually are with the Panthers. And with Parker Huber on the mound and with Devin Fry on the mound for Soton, that's what you expect to see again here between these two clubs. We knew that this was going to be a tough matchup coming into this. Well, nope, we knew it when they first handed the schedules out. <laughs> yes. It wasn't all of a sudden we go, hey, these guys are pretty good. Uh, both teams just have one loss apiece. Colfax just losing to Pullman last week. A Sultan just losing to Freeman uh, more recently also. So here again, some tremendous records by these two teams, and they're solid programs. And as you hear all these uh, names, you're going to go, I think I've heard every one of these names yep. uh, before. And you know what? You're pretty much right. Probably have heard them probably too many times at this point in terms of what we've seen from all these guys, and it's good to see uh, them both all coming out for baseball once again. Colfax in their blue jerseys, Colfax in cursive across the front. Play ball given by the umpire, and here's the first pitch from Parker Huber. It is in the dirt and smothered by Cal Gregory for ball one. The Panthers wearing all white jerseys, both tops and bottoms, with black letters and numbers outlined in orange. Panthers across the front. Here's the pitch. That one in the zone, a good pitch by Parker. It is now one ball and one strike. Parker makes it even. That's where he wanted to throw the first pitch. Yep. But just was a little bit outside. Second one ends up a little low. He's going to the same general area. Going, going to the outside. Of outside the, in the, on the lower side of the strike zone. To the right-handed Devin Fry. It's a right-handed matchup between the two. The pitch. This one is foul as it did bounce off the ground, and so it will be two balls and two strikes. Cal making contact with it to make sure it is foul, and play ends, and now we go two balls, two strikes. Parker ready, glove in front of his face. He's come set, doesn't like the first two offerings. He likes the third thing Cal picked. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Bouncing in there, and it gets away from Gregory, and we'll go for ball three. Filling the count, three balls and two strikes. Josh Wilkinson retrieving the ball for the Panthers and for our home plate umpire, and we're ready to go. Three and two, full count. Parker from the windup. Here comes the pitch. Ground ball bouncing towards Kyle. It's going to bounce into his glove on a two hop over to first in time. Perfect play by Kyle Apple to back up his pitcher. And out number one is recorded on the 5 3 force out at first. Nice fielding by Kyle Apple, even though it had a little bit of a slightly awkward bounce at the edge of the grass. Yep. He adjusted pretty quickly, got his feet underneath him, and threw to steady Nate Atkinson. That's right. And so at the plate steps in number two in the order, Josh Wilkinson, the right fielder, his first pitch on the way. Ball one. A little outside from Parker. Moves to the dirt from the mound, and now Parker set and ready with the windup. That one in there for a strike. So Parker, first two batters, he starts with the first pitch ball and then immediately gets back even at a ball and a strike. Parker again, the windup, the righty faces, another right-hander. This one golfed into the air. This one headed and going to bloop in between the left and center fielders. Becker is going to get it in front of Anderson. So a one-out single from Josh Wilkinson puts a runner on board for the Panthers, and that brings up the catcher and hard-hitting Elliot Marks. Yeah, this one right over the top of Lane Ginrich. And when I say over the top, I meant way over the top. Yeah. It, was, it was way up in the air. Landed directly between those three players, Ginrich, Anderson and Becker. Parker ready. He'll pitch from the stretch with the runner Wilkinson down at first. Marks ready. Huber ready. Here comes the pitch. That one up into the air. Cal had it pop out of his glove. He's going to fire down to second. That's going to get away and it's going to get into center field. But Anderson is there to back things up. As, as we've talked about in the past, Randy, always impressive. Colfax being ready to go and everybody backing up everybody else. And Kieran in perfect position to back that one up. Ball one. Yeah, well, both these two teams anticipate play, anticipate the play coming ahead, and that's what you really need to do. And so it will be down at second base. Wilkinson with the steal. A ball and no strikes. Parker checks back at him, now fires. This one golfed out into left center field. This one's going to easily get down for a base hit. It's going to get all the way almost to the wall. Anderson's got it tracked down. Marks is going to get into second with an easy stand-up RBI double. Well hit ball. Not much different than the ball hit by Wilkerson earlier, except this one maybe had a little more velocity behind. Yes. So it rolled a lot farther, giving uh, Marks a double, but also more, more importantly to the Panthers, bringing Wilkerson in to uh, score. So one out on the board. It is Devin Fry was the first batter up in the first out. First pitch is in the strike zone inside to Renzelman as Noah, the right-hander, takes the first first pitch strike from Parker Huber. Nothing in one. 
On second base is Marks with his RBI double. The second pitch is fouled off of Cal and off of Renzelman for strike two. The third baseman for the Panthers batting cleanup here in game number one. It's Parker ahead 0-2 on the mound, pitching from the right hand to the right-handed. Noah Renzelman. No balls, two strikes. Heber checks back at second. Long look there, now fires. Strike three called, bottom of the zone. Got Renzelman looking, and there's the first strikeout of the day as Hubert puts two outs on the board and now brings up number five in the order, Mason Hurlbert, the first baseman. That was a hard pitch to handle for a batter. It was right at the edge of the strike zone, and, well, here's another one right at the edge. Parker had been going to the outside corner and had been missing a couple of different times, so now he's coming to the inside of the right-handed batters, and he's hit his first four pitches to that spot. No one won to Hurlbert. This one golfed foul towards the third base coach and third baseman Kyle Apple, but well foul, so it will be 0-2 as Parker gets a new baseball. Marks down at second. one nothing Panthers with an 0-2 count to the fifth hitter in the lineup, Mason Hurlburt. Huber set, checks back at second, the pitch. That was a fantastic movement on that pitch, Randy. We could see it because we're right behind home plate, and that one really was cooking from the inside, and it all of a sudden turned to the outside at the last second, and Herbert just able to get the bat to it. Yeah, just getting a bat to it. He had to move quickly on that one, hit it foul, this time to the right side. No balls, two strikes. Parker set again, Cal ready. The pitch is high. Gregory retrieves it, keeps it from going to the backstop, and it's now one ball and two strikes. Two out, man on second is Marks. Parker fires. Swing and a miss, two strikeouts, one looking, one swinging. A run scores on the RBI double from Marks. Two hits, one run, no errors, and that's it for the top of the first. We come back, Colfax trailing one nothing for the bottom half of the first inning. It'll be Cal Gregory to lead things off on the other side of the break here on 1450 KCLX and also online at listentothegame.com. You're clear. Uh, 60. EJ? Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah, I heard you. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> that's, I, when I reached around like this, I thought, oh, that's no place to put your hand. And then the pass ball comes through. It was really not a good place to put your hand. Yeah. Surprised it didn't give. I know Elliot's got speed, but I was a little surprised it didn't give him a courtesy runner after we got to two outs. Oh, because of being a catcher. Yeah. But Ten seconds. But he's got speed, so he's got speed. Smart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Back in five, four, three, two, one. We welcome you back here to Asoton, Washington. It's Matthew Zimmer and Randy Stickle here with you as the Colfax Bulldogs will get their first chance at the plate as it's the bottom of the first inning. one nothing for the Panthers. Randy, we haven't seen Colfax down early in games. Also, they haven't had a lot of home games, or they've had zero actual home games. They've had a couple <laughs> where they've been the home team, so yes. not a lot of chances to be behind. But uh, Asoton jumps out, a uh, base hit and a double, gets the runner home, and it makes it one nothing Asoton, and that brings Colfax and Cal Gregory to the plate. Your three do up. Cal, the catcher, Kyle Apple, your third baseman, and Parker Huber, the pitcher, <coughs> do up here in the first inning. Defense for the Panthers. Fry on the mound, pitching to Marks. Hurlbert over at first. Dylan Landris at second. Juries at shortstop. Third base is manned by Renzelman as the first pitch comes from Devin Fry. In the zone for a strike. First pitch strike to Cal Gregory. Out on the outfield, Taryn Judy in left field. Hunter Landris out in center. And Wilkinson, the man who scored the first run of the game out in right field. Nothing and one to Cal. That one ends up as a ball. So opposite start, but the same count that Parker Huber had in the first couple of batters as it's one and one to Cal Gregory. This one looked like it was going to be a strike, but just dropped at the last moment. Fry doesn't like the first offering, likes the second from Marks. Here's the pitch. Cal smacks a golf shot out into right center field. It's going to get down. Off and running for second base. Cal is charging for two. Wilkinson with a hard throw into second. Safe is the call as Cal rifles in with a stand-up double. Or sorry, it's not a stand-up double, but a lead-off double <laughs> as it's now the tying run at first. <laughs> stand, he uh, 
slid in. So then yeah, stood up at the then end. Then stood up at the <laughs> end, you know, which you hope he does get up eventually. But well hit ball just to the right. Kind of hit where the uh, Soton players did, but they all theirs both went left. That's right. Right in the gap between the center the and right fielder this time as Kyle Apple steps in. First pitch from Fry to him. That one is low and inside for ball one. Kyle playing at third. Again, we've talked about Kyle's ability to play just about everywhere on the field as we've seen him at third, out in the field, out in the outfield, out at the pitcher's mound, So and even behind the plate. Ball one to him, so Fry comes set. Gets what he wants from Marks as Cal takes his lead at second. A ball and no strikes. Fry keeps checking back and now fires. Outside for ball two. Cal took a big lead, a secondary lead after the pitch was fired and Marks was ready to throw down there. But Cal, as we always see, intellectually, darts back to second. Sure. Wasn't going to risk it with nobody out. Two balls and no strikes to Apple as Fry leans in to get the sign from Marks. He'll pitch from the stretch. Fry comes set now. Two balls, no strikes. The pitch to Apple. In the zone, inside corner strike. And it's two and one. Give it to Devin Fry. That was a long time between pitches. Sometimes they cool off a little bit, but that was a good pitch to throw. Two balls and a strike. Fry long lean. Gets the sign from Marks. Cal takes his lead. The 2-1 on the way. Inside ball three to Kyle. By the way, that throw from Wilkinson that nearly got Cal at second base, not a surprise. We saw Josh as the starting quarterback for a Soton, so uh, we know he's got a cannon on him. And he showed it a little bit there from right field earlier. Three and one is the count to Kyle. Cal takes his lead. The pitch from Fry. Just found the inside of the zone. That fills the count. Two full counts between the two starting pitchers. It was the first batter that Parker faced. That's the pitcher on the mound right now, Devin Fry. It's the second one Fry faces here in Kyle Apple. Three and two, nobody out. And Cal down at first, uh, down to second, excuse me. Fry finally comes set. The full count and the payoff pitch on the way. Low and Kyle works himself a walk and he brings the go-ahead run to first. As Parker Huber will now step to the plate and try to give himself a tying run and... Maybe a go-ahead run. As, again, it's Cal down at second and Kyle at first. Plenty of speed on the base paths for the Colfax starting pitcher, Parker Huber, batting third. Nice patient at bat for Kyle Apple. Certainly was. Didn't swing at anything he didn't want. Marks given the defensive sign before he sends the sign out to Fry hmm. for the pitch. Parker ready, Fry ready. From the stretch, the first pitch. Upstairs for ball one. Parker, happy to take ball one, and we'll see what he gets from Fry for the second pitch. First baseman, Hurlbert, goes in front of Apple over at first near the infield grass. Cal takes his lead at second. The 1-0 from Fry on the way. Grounded foul down the third base side. Coach Parrish fields it and throws it back to Devin. Ball and a strike to Parker Huber. On deck, your cleanup hitter, first baseman Nate Ackeson. Parker with one hard smack of home plate as he brings the bat to his shoulder and it bounces up and down. Right-handed battle between Fry and Huber. Cal and Kyle take their leads at second and first. One ball, one strike, nobody out. The pitch from Fry. Parker with a swing and a drive. That one deep to right field. Wilkinson going back. He makes the catch. Tagging and going to third is Cal. Kyle was ready to go in case the ball got past the shortstop. It does not, so it will go down as a fly out to right field, but it gets the job done moving Cal to third. Kyle stays at first. It is just the first out, so another shot like that would tie the game if Nate Atkinson can send one deep, and it only ends up as a sacrifice fly, but well done by Parker to move Cal over to third. And that's exactly what he wanted to do. Kyle didn't really have a chance. He was caught in that dead zone between. Yes. Not having any idea what, what was going to come out of it. He was bouncing halfway between first and second, went back to first, and then to realized retreat, yeah. nowhere to go after that. Runners are at the corners. They're still the same guys on the base paths. It's Cal over at third now. Kyle still at first. The pitch to Ackeson. Nate watches strike one come across as Nate, the first and only lefty in the lineup for the Bulldogs at this point. Nate loves that inside part of the box. He'll come very close on that back foot. One out, two runners on. Fry with a long stare down in to get the sign from Marks. Pickoff attempt to first, and Kyle is safe. 
as Apple dives in underneath the tag applied by Hurlbert. He's back at the bag ready to go as well in case Fry wants another pickoff attempt. Another one on the way. Kyle dives back. He's safe. You can look at Kyle Gregory over at third base. He knows if that ball gets dropped or goes on beyond, that's his opportunity to go. That's right, and he's got the speed to get there if the ball gets away from Hurlbert. Fry, a long look over at first. Now he gets to look into the marks. That pitch is swung on and fouled down the, third ba excuse me, down the first baseline. Nate sent it right to Coach Gregory. Again, Scott Parrish down to third. Wayne Gregory down at first. Wayne down in a stance as if he's ready to field a ground ball. Coach Parrish straight up, trying to give the signs and ready for Atkinson. No balls, two strikes to Nate with one out and runners at the corners. The pitch, way upstairs. That's ball one. Good watch by Nate and good leave by Atkinson. Yeah, that one wouldn't have been a good one to swing at at all. <laughs> Marks was ready to go fire down to first or, or third, and neither batter or runner, I should say, for Colfax was going anywhere. Kyle dives back again. Kyle's got good, strong legs, and that's one of the things that helps him. You know, he's got that immediate dive back that he's just got to be ready to go at a moment's notice. The pitch. Nate with a shot to center. This one's going to drop. Kyle's going to score, and going off to second is Apple, and so we have a tie ball game thanks to the base knocked up the middle by Nate Ackeson. This time rather being the gap between right field and and uh, center field for Colfax. This one was straight up the middle, but this time it was between second base and the center fielder. Had just enough carry to drop in f behind the middle infielders, but not enough carry to get to the center fielder, so a perfect shot. Scotty Parrish was reading it perfectly, and he sent Cal before the ball was even close to the ground, so he knew it was not going to get to center fielder Hunter Landris. The first pitch to Blake Bodie, number five in the order. Blake fouls it off for strike one. Blake batting in the fifth spot from right field. The entire outfield is your next three up in terms of Bodie is here from right field and Kieran Anderson is on deck should we get to him. One out on the board, no balls and a strike to Blake. Long look in for Fry as he goes back to facing right-handed batters. Long look back at second to pitch. Just found the bottom of the zone for strike two. Fry's hat might be a little bit too big for his head. He's had a couple of times where it's almost fallen off, and that pitch, it did fall off. It fell off on some warm-up pitches, too. But That's right. Also just shows how hard he can throw. No balls and two strikes. Bodie trying to get on base and move the runners over. One out on the board. The pitch from Fry. Up and in. Wow. Ball one. Good hold off by Bodie. That had some late movement. Fortunately, it didn't go down. It just stayed from left to right. If you notice, he's got gloves on this time after losing a bat at Pullman. It's right. Without the gloves, a ball and two strikes. But he still uses the dirt. <laughs> yes, he does. He's got dirt in his blood. One out, two on. One, one tie in the bottom of the first. The pitch. Oh. Wow. Called strike three. Thought it was outside. Bodie not happy with it. Don't blame him there. Karen Anderson will step in now. The center fielder looking to send a shot over his center field counterpart or anywhere, actually. <laughs> two on, two out. Karen at the plate. Right-handed matchup between Anderson and Fry, the starting pitcher for the Panthers. The pitch. Strike one. A lot of movement. That one ended up in the middle of the plate. Started inside. No balls and a strike. The center fielder out there, again, that is Hunter Landers. He's shading towards just a little bit towards left field. Not very much and definitely not as far as we saw in our earlier games that we've called for Colfax where the left, the center fielder was practically in left field. Right. Strike two as Kieran fouls it off. Well, I think Liberty and Springdale both, when they shift, they shifted significantly. They certainly did. And Ackeson will retake his lead at first while, again, at second it's Kyle Apple. No balls and two strikes. Two on and two out. Anderson ready after the long look from Fry to Marks. Here comes the pitch. Whoa. Got just a piece of it. <laughs> that Came was up a... way up, and Kieran able to fight it off. Right in my lap here, practically. <laughs> Without this fence, it certainly would have been. Uh, yeah. No balls, two strikes. Kieran ready. Fry on the mound, getting the sign from Marks. Shook off a couple of them, and now he comes set. Two on, two out. 
No balls and two strikes. Here comes the pitch from Fry. Popped it up. And that one is going to just get off of the netting and leave the field of play ever so closely as the netting here at Asotan, if you've never been, it starts to peek over the top of the backstop. And so it just hit where it would have been in the field of play had that not been there, but it would have been very close to being out. So See, yeah. Be trapped like the one ball that's up there now. That's right. 0-2, oh still the count for Kieran. Two on, two out, 1-1 one, one tie. Here comes the pitch. Swing out in front and a good pitch there from Fry. He ends the same way that Parker Huber did. He gives up a run, but he's able to hold off Colfax by striking out, looking and swinging the last two batters of the inning. We go to the top of the second. It's a 1-1 one, one tie, and coming to the plate will be left fielder Taryn Judy for the Panthers when we return here on 1450 KCLX and also online at listentothegame.com. Clear. Uh, 60. You got it. Sweet. Back here to Asotan, Washington. Matthew Zimmer, Randy Stickler here with you. And Taryn Judy started off with ball one from Parker as he just couldn't find the bottom of the zone on that first pitch. The 1-0 from Parker. Ground ball, foul, headed right towards his own dugout and lifted over there by Noah Renzelman, who was paying attention to the ball as it kept getting closer. And he protecting his teammates as the closest one to the exit of the dugout. A ball and a strike. Here comes the pitch. What a curve is that one. Is a strike. It ended up all the way to Coach Parrish at the Bulldogs dugout, but it was a swing and a miss from Judy. That had some nasty break on it as it got closer to the plate. Yeah, so when it when it broke, it actually hit. I think it hit Cal in the foot. It, it did. Re reflected off of him. The one two is outside. And Judy holding off of that one, much to the delightment of his teammates in the dugout. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch from Parker on the way. Fouled off of both Cal and Judy, so even though it started to go fair, it would have been foul, so coach, or sorry, not coach, umpire Tim Lewis very quick on the call to make sure Cal didn't try to rush over to grab it and tag him. Two balls, two strikes. Straight up on the defensive side in the infield. The pitch. Swing and a miss as Parker's got three straight Ks. The final two of the first inning, and now the first one to start here in the top of the second as Taron Judy goes down swinging his second strikeout, swinging in a row, and again his third overall in a row as he'll now face Hunter Hunter Landris, the center fielder. Yeah, good one to kind of get your momentum right now over the part of this game, and wow. Strike one is... That's a hard one. That was the call that Bodie didn't like, and it's strike one, so consistent. The 0-1. Knocked into the center field, and Kieran's going to have to play it on a couple of bounces as it ends up low, and it kind of died in the outfield. I'm not sure if the outfield wet would expect it to be at least a little bit. I think it's rained the last couple of days here. That's a base hit, one out base hit by Landris, so that could be interesting to see how that plays out for the two teams in terms of if the uh, outfield and infield has retained some water and slows down the momentum of the ball bouncing out there. That one, again, a base hit. One out on the board, Carson Jury, the shortstop, will step in. He's a right-handed batter. He'll face the right-handed pitching of Parker as that's outside. Parker misses that one, ball one. Cal was ready to fire down to Nate if Hunter Landers got any ideas. He did not. The reason I keep mentioning Hunter so deliberately is because Dylan Landers is up next. So we do have a pair of Landers batters and players as that one. Randy, that hit the netting, and immediately when it hit the ground, died did not bounce did not come up just immediately stopped in the dirt so you, you got a feeling that it's 
even though the field looks like in good condition, you can see the top is nice and dry and soft, that it's soft below. Yep, and willing to stop all momentum. Ball two thrown here to Juries. That one up high, two balls and a strike. Atkinson over at first for the Bulldogs on defense. Henning second, shortstop Gingrich and Apple at third. The pitch, swing and a miss. Runner goes, Cal fires, it bobbled out of his hand and that's a good stop by Evan Henning. As Cal tried to rush it, unfortunately it ended up as a stolen base as Landris gets down to second. Good speed by Landris. And also, Cal just didn't get a grip on it quite quick enough. And that's what Coach Parrish was just telling to him. He said, you know, take your time, make sure you got it in your hand, then, then throw it. Two balls, two strikes, one on, one out, and the runner at second base, the pitch. Strike three called. That's the same spot Bodie didn't like, and the Soton Panther fans now on the other See end that. of it don't like it either. <laughs> I think that's one that a lot of people will second guess. Those, yeah. I think there's a lot of second guessing that goes in umpiring anyway, or refereeing of any kind. That's fair. Two outs on the board, they're both strikeouts. At the plate, Dylan Landris. Dylan pokes one towards the third base, it's gonna get through. Coming up with a throw will be Becker as they're going to put the stop sign up for the runner going to third, which is Hunter Landris. So we've got a pair of Landrises on the base path. Hunter at third, Dylan at first as both have received and put up base hits so far. Back to the top of the order, and the top man in the order is Devin Fry, the pitcher. Hubert waiting for Cal to come out. Cal will give the signs for the Bulldogs. As Colfax will be ready, they'll have a force out at first and second. Of course, just trying to get it the out any way possible with runners at the corners, trying to keep the game tied at one here, top two. First pitch to Fry. Whoa, way inside, high and tight. A little bit of forehead music for ball one. Fry easily got out of the way, but yeah, it was close. He did flinch a little bit and reel back a touch. Ball and no strikes, the pitch. Low for ball two. There is a base open. Parker would not like to fill it. But he's behind 2-0. Two, oh. two balls and no strikes. Two on, two out. The pitch. Fouled off of Fry's bat just off the top. And that'll be strike one as Josh Wilkinson comes to retrieve the ball for the home plate umpire. And we get ready to go for 2-1 and one, the count. Fry and Huber facing off. Pitcher versus pitcher. The pitch. Runner goes down to second. The throw by Cal is way in time, and he is out at second base. The perfect throw by Gregory wow. as he makes up for it from before, and Cal was really trying to get that one, and he was way in front of Dylan Landers, who was gunned down from behind home plate on the 2-4 throwdown. Well done by Cal, and we'll go to the bottom of the second. Leading off will be Kellen Becker when we return here on 1450 KCLX and also online at listentothegame.com. Clear. 60. Two hits. You got it. One Thank off. you. Two hits and one left off. Whew. That's what he was trying to do with the other ones. This time he had a grip on it. Right yeah, away. he did. The other one, he kind of picked it up and then then threw it. And then the first time, he didn't even have a good one at all. In the, the first, first one, inning, the first inning, one, he didn't even have a chance. In the first inning. Now, that wasn't even a... That was one of those that... That was, an, that, was, that was one that I've seen other teams well, that was one like that overthrow a mile. It was not even his fault. It was just he never had a chance at grabbing it and then threw it. Yeah. Softball. Those are the ones that go, oh, where are you going with that? <laughs> All right. All right, here. All right. One, two, Becker, Thank you. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15. Back in five. Four, three, two, one. Welcome back to Asotan, Washington. Matthew Zimmer and Randy Stickle here with you as the Colfax Bulldogs take on the Asotan Panthers. Colfax, your home team, despite being here in Asotan for the game. Of course, Colfax was scheduled to be the home team and had to move the game to Asotan due to field conditions. We are here tied at one, bottom of the second, the bottom third of the order. Becker, Miller, and Gingrich are three due up. Here's the pitch from Fry. First one to Becker is ball one. So Colfax able to get out of a runners at the corners jam thanks to a pinpoint throw from Cal Gregory down to second that beat the runner by about four steps and able to get the out. It's a ball and no strikes. Here comes the pitch. Fouled away for strike one. A ball and a strike on the count for Kellen. As Mason Miller, your designated hitter, is on deck and he 
Retrieves the ball, and we're ready to go. One and one. Fry from the windup. Here's the one-one pitch. Fantastic pitch from Fry as it started high and inside and ends up right in the middle of the zone for uh, strike two. Those are those type of pitches that you're thinking, oh, that's going to be way high the whole time, and the last second just slips in. The one-two. Callen gets a piece of it, sends it towards third base. It's lifted and fired by Renzelman in time at first as Becker is retired on the 5-3 force out for out number one here in the bottom of the second. Stepping to the plate, now your designated hitter, Mason Miller. Mason is hitting in place of second baseman, Evan Henning. So Fry will get set from the windup. He'll get the sign from Marks. Here comes the first pitch to Miller. Inside strike one. Right at the knees of Miller. 1-1 one, one tie on the scoreboard. Nothing in one is your count. Fry ahead of Miller. Here comes the 0-1. Same spot, just about a little bit higher. But right on that inside line of the box for a strike. Strike two. Looked like he put a, pulled a little off of it on that one, too. Making it kind of drop even more. Had a little more movement. No balls, two strikes, one on. Sorry, one out. That one tried to do it again, and it left his hand a little early. And it bounces way out in front of home plate for ball one. Miller, a righty. Again, the only lefty for the Bulldogs in the lineup, Nate Ackeson. So Miller, another right-handed matchup for Fry to face off with. A ball and two strikes. One out the pitch. Another one that left a little early, and that one ends up underneath the feet and between the legs of Mason Miller. And Mason just kind of looked at him and went, I, I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> kind of looked at it, looked at Elliot Marks like, I, I'll get out of the way. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. Fry has made the count even after getting ahead 0-2. Doesn't like the first couple of calls from Marks. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Oh, that nearly hit Mason, and strike three is called. Okay. Mason goes down looking, gave a look to the home plate umpire, and Marks looks at the home plate umpire and goes, yeah, that was the right call. You think they have opinions? <laughs> <laughs> you think they would do any otherwise? Pitch, I don't know. First pitch to Lane is right down the middle for strike one as Fry continues to lose his hat out on the mound. Nothing in one to the number nine man in the order, Lane Gingrich. Cal on the top of the order looking to get a chance. They can with two outs, the 0-1. Ball one. So Lane takes a step out, checks down at third base to get any new signs from Coach Parrish. A ball and a strike with two out. The pitch from Fry on the way. Bounces out there and it will be ball two. Marks tried to stop it and as he Tried to get it down low, and then he put, brought his glove back up. The ball just snow coned out of his glove and ended up up the first baseline. So now we're ready to go. Two balls and a strike. Two out on the board with Cal on deck, hoping to get a chance. The pitch from Fry. Low ball three. First three ball count for Fry since the second battery faced in Kyle Apple. Lane just getting more patient as the season goes along. Getting a lot of experience as a freshman. There certainly is. Three balls and a strike. The pitch from Fry. Ground ball headed towards third. High hop on the second bounce. Fired from third. Just got lane in time as Renzelman fires to Hurlbert, and that's out number three. So a pair of plays by Renzelman to first. Helps retire the Bulldogs in order after Miller struck out looking. We'll be right back. Tied at one, top of the third, when we come back on 1450 KCLX and online at listentothegame.com. You're clear. Uh, 60. You got it. Thank you. Do what? Where? Yeah. Yeah. Or canoeing. <laughs> if anybody can turn it over, it's parishes. Yeah. <laughs> You can tell how focused I am that I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Took me a, like, I was like, oh, the field. I, 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 had to, I had to put my blinker on and switch three lanes over. <laughs> like, what? Okay. And gotcha. we still missed the exit. 
<laughs> no, I... Ten seconds. I missed the exit. Yeah. <laughs> so Fry backed up. Right. Fresh, though. Right. Find the way, bud. Good eye. Okay, now ten seconds. Okay, that makes more sense. I was like, I was like, I was counting. You're down. back in five, four, three, two, one. We welcome you back here to Asotin, Washington. Matthew Zimmer, Randy Stickle here with you as the we're at the home of the Panthers. Although it's playing home to Colfax for today's game, top of the third, top of the order. Devin Fry tied one and one. Parker fires in a strike for one and two. Again, Fry was at the plate when uh, Cal was able to fire down to second and get Dylan Landers trying to steal. Here's the one two. Swing and a miss. Parker found his stuff and says so long to Devin Fry, who jogs his way back to the dugout. It's interesting. Devin Fry was up and he is at a two one count coming from the last inning, That's but right. you, you start all over again and this time, boy. Parker was not wasting any time, and he said so long to Devin Fry for out number one as he fires ball one to Josh Wilkinson. A ball and no strikes. Here comes the pitch from Parker. It's cut on and missed over the top of that one. Wilkinson now has the same count he had when he sent the single into the gap of left center field. He would then steal second and be scored home by the double by Marks, the pitch. What a pitch by Parker Huber. Started way inside, cut all the way to the bottom outside corner for one and two. Well, fooled a couple of us. Certainly did. Specifically Wilkerson and me. Yeah. <laughs> Ball and two strikes, the pitch. Golfed out into right field. Bodie, halfway between. He's going to find it, grab it, <laughs> squeeze it for out number two. As, he, as Bodie was running, he didn't have to go very far, but sometimes an overcast... It turned skies. on him at the last second. Yeah, it turned just a little tiny bit, but it also in overcast skies, you're looking into a lot of white and gray. Yes. And it's it, there's a little bit of a glare out there, so we kind of... It's very easy to lose it out very there. Very easy to lose it. Don't like, but he didn't, obviously. Made the catch as Elliot Marks steps in. Ball one thrown to him on a curveball. Misses in the dirt. Marks sent a 1-0 pitch into the gap for a double that nearly got all the way to the wall. I think it hit the warning track out there. Ball and no strikes. For Marks facing Huber, the pitch with two outs. Perfect spot on the outside as it was up above the knees, but a perfect spot on the outside corner, one and one. Marks will now come closer in on the box. The one one pitch sent over the head of the, the second baseman, Henning, as it takes a turn off the first hop, and so Anderson has to retreat back to where he was starting to come from as Marks is now two for two. Wasn't going to mention it at the start, but I can mention it now. L.A. Marks has been kind of a pain in the in the butt for Colfax in the years past, and he continues to show why. He is just a very solid batter. Again, two for two, a double and a single. Well, plus a pretty outstanding catcher, too. Yeah, that doesn't hurt. That Yeah. Ground ball by Renzelman over to shortstop. Gingrich goes the short way to second. He gets the out on the force out of Marks. So the 6-4 force out ends the inning on the fielder's choice by Renzelman. We'll take a break. When we come back, we're still tied at one. Bottom of the third, Colfax will be off with their leadoff, just like the Panthers were. Cal Gregory, when we return here on 1450 KCLX and also online at listentothegame.com. You're clear. Uh, 60, please. You got it. Sweet. Uh, so there'd be one left on, wouldn't there? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. It's hard to quantify because I was, I'm like, well, there was one he never going. got there. <laughs> Well, it's either get him or get the other guy in the fielder's choice. I, I don't know. It's always weird. It's like. Both pitchers had their longest inning. It was the first. So you're not a coach, so you could be video coordinator. <laughs> What's the score right now? Tied at one. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, you know, you enjoy it, right? It's a lot less stressful. Hey, see? <laughs> there you go. Then it's worth it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and you get to provide an extra 
means of listening and watching. A lot of people that don't can't make the trip. Was at home, they could drive a few minutes and listen to the game, but may not be able to come down. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Can you say the score one more time? Tied at one. All right. Back in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back. Bottom of the third. Cal Gregory and the leadoff. At the top of the order for the Bulldogs for the bottom of the third inning as we're tied at one run apiece as Devin Fry will face off with Cal Gregory the first pitch. Curveball strike as Fry has done an excellent job for most of this game starting batters off with a first pitch strike. Get ahead, that's your goal, and he's done that so far against Cal, the 0-1 on the way. Just found the corner for strike two as the wind has finally found us. We tried to... <laughs> hide from it for a while, but it has found Randy and I as it continues to track us along the Palouse for the last month. The 0-2. Cal chases it. It's in the dirt. Marks is going to have to throw down to first, and Cal nearly beats out the throw, but it will be a strikeout and a throw down on a 2-3 force out for out number one. It will be Kyle Apple stepping into the plate. Again, we are tied at one. Both runs coming in the first. It was Josh Wilkinson scoring for the Panthers and Cal Gregory scoring for the Bulldogs as we still sit tied at one apiece. Kyle hit, takes the first pitch and fouls it to the Asotan dugout. Immediately the coach for the Panthers right there ready and waiting, and he grabs it and fires it right back to Fry, so Devin is back and ready to go. No balls and a strike as for Apple ch checked down with Coach Parrish, and now he's ready. Nothing in one. Huber on deck, the pitch. Inside and low for ball one. Count comes even. Kyle is one of just two batters that has seen a three ball count from Devin Fry. The other one was in the last inning against Lane Gingrich. But we sit at one ball and one strike with one out. Here comes the pitch. Another one low and inside for ball two. Well, Kyle actually got the count to go full. He did. Before he got his walk. That's right. Two balls and a strike as we hear a cheer from the softball side. Don't know which team cheering, but a loud shriek from the softball side as it's now three balls and one strike. Kyle eager enough to take the first swing but also patient enough to wait and see three balls go by and we'll see if he can get a fourth one. Three balls and a strike. The righty waits for the right-handed delivery from Fry. It's on the way. Kyle slaps it foul and it's going to be barehanded by Coach Parrish. As we've talked about this before. He's got some experience and not his first rodeo <laughs> or baseball game. No. No, that would be true. Count runs full for a second straight time between Fry and Apple. Fry doesn't like the first. Still shaking off Marks. Likes what he's got now. Three and two. The payoff. Golfed back up over off the glove of Fry. Apple trying to beat it out. The shortstop with the throw is not going to be in time. Excellent effort by Carson Juries, but just better speed for Kyle Apple as he races out a base hit. Well, once Fry got his mid on it, that didn't turn it. That into hurt a pretty, Carson. Yeah, it's pretty awkward fielding. So juries really so, didn't have a chance after yeah, that. Yeah, wasn't. And you know, Fry had to do that. Yes, he thought he had a chance at it. Sure. He, and he almost did. Needed it maybe another a spectacular inch. catch if he'd have got it. Yeah. Parker Huber at the plate, the pitch. Outside for ball one. Kyle has to deal with a throwdown from Marks as. Hurlbert able to make the catch, and Kyle back. And the last time he was on first base, they threw down to him a ton. It did. He, he he is one of the ones that has had to really get his jersey dirty, and it's been because of pickoff attempts. That pitch from Devin is in there for a strike. Parker Huber's first time up. A fly out to right field that sent Cal from second to third to help Gregory get a chance to score. Fry doesn't look like he's coming all the way set before he just threw that pick off to Kyle. Granted, maybe didn't need to because he was just getting the ball back from Marks. It's a ball and a strike as Kyle retakes his lead. One on, one out. Outside corner strike called against Parker. It's one and two. Both sides have not been happy with that outside corner. <laughs> no. One ball and two strikes. Apple takes his lead. Fry leans in. Gets the sign from Marks. He's ready. Here's the pitch. Good leave by Parker as this one stays up a little bit. It's ball two. 
Count even, two balls and two strikes, Randy. Here again, well, no, let's see, Parker was at one and one when he flew out to right field before. That's right. Apple with the lead, Fry looks at him, now looks back at the plate, now looks back at Kyle. Looks over the shoulder as he's set, the 2-2. Two -two. Off speed stuff as that one, Parker cheating a little bit on the fastball and Parker swings and misses and it's strike out number two of the inning and out number two. Yeah, just watching so far in three, just, well, almost in three innings, both pitchers seem to be doing better as this game goes along. They had their most pitches, and that's when both scores occurred was the first inning. Two outs on the board. Nate Ackeson has shown some power this season. He's got one of the home runs for the Bulldogs this year. Runner on first. Whoa, way inside. That ball gets away, and Kyle couldn't see the ball. Actually, they say that it hit Nate Ackeson, so Nate... Kyle should stay at second because he was going to steal it. Nate jogged down to first, so we'll see what the call ends up They're being. We're going to discuss. The fans Every, behind us on the got, side. Yeah, didn't. Everybody's got an opinion on this one. but That one was tough to tell. He stole it. Kyle stole it. He shouldn't have to go back. He cleanly was at second before... Okay. Anything happened, so we'll see. Scotty Parrish is getting an explanation as to what happened. So they're going to let Kyle stay down at second base with a stolen base. Okay. So they got half of what they wanted. <laughs> the other half is back at home plate. Nate Ackerson, a ball on his count. Kyle Apple down at second base, now in scoring position. Nate will try to bring him back and score the run. The pitch from Fry. Way outside for ball two. Throw down to second. Apple with a he uh, foot first slide, and he just got that long right leg in there. And he's safe. That's ball two. They were trying to pick Kyle off as he was halfway between second and third, and Kyle didn't think Marks was going to throw it. And Elliot said, fine, I will throw it. <laughs> you don't want to challenge these kind of catchers. No. Cal and Elliot, two of the ones in the league, both north or south division, that you just you don't really want to challenge them because they'll, they'll take on the challenge and, Always try to beat you. He'll be sorry. Yeah. Kyle takes his lead down at second. Two balls and no strikes as Nate digs back in. The pitch from the righty to the lefty. Another one outside for ball three. Nate had a one-two single with one out. Wait a second here. Now I'm confused. Am I behind? I didn't think I was. But apparently we both were. Ball four. Well, he got what he wanted when he had, thought he got hit. So he didn't get hit by the pitch. Oh, intentional. They thought they gave him the three, so they chose to give him the fourth one without throwing it. Okay, so that okay, that's not a That makes thrown. sense. Nope. Ball, okay. but again, this time an intentional. As Kyle's caught between second and third, and he's out. Wow, well Marks. short wow. of second. Marks easily gets him out. Colfax with two down and two on. Kyle Apple thrown out. We'll take a break when we come back. It is the top of the fourth inning, led off by Mason Hurlbert for the Panthers here on 1450 KCLX and also online at listentothegame.com. You're clear. 60. You got it. Thanks. Are you there? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, uh, what was your score again? For baseball? Yeah. 1-1. One, one. Okay, that's that's what we thought, but there's a little bit of... Okay. I said it, I said it uh, a bunch of times when we came back, too, to make sure, but... Well, it was, there's just a little bit of confusion. Okay, thanks. Yeah, text me, too. I have my phone. Unless you tried that. Oh, yeah. Seven seconds. Thank you. You're back in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to Asotin. First pitch from Parker Huber is fouled off there by Mason Hurlbert, the first baseman for strike one. Mason was the second strikeout victim of Parker back in the first. And Parker had 0-1. Here's the next offering. Strike two inside corner. So Colfax picked off at second. Apple picked off on the 2-6. 
And at the end of the 0-2. Whoa! <laughs> Boy, that was a deflection. That just got a piece of it and just got over the netting on the right field side and went way foul sharply. Nothing in two as Parker went up and in. Here's the pitch from Huber. Right back at Parker. Picks it up off of a hop. Throws it over to first. Nate easily ready there. And that is out number one on the 1-3 flip over to first. Sharply hit a second time. Of course, Hurlburt's first one was a foul off that he didn't intend. Was trying to pull back on what right. would have been ball one. And then this time intentionally. And Parker just able to snag it right around his shins. First pitch to Judy. Swing and a miss. Took something off that one for strike one. Judy playing out in left field. Struck out on the fifth pitch of the at-bat. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Good stop by Cal as it hits him. It hit in front of home plate and bounced off of Cal's chest plate. No balls and two strikes. One out. Facing Judy. Taron with a tap of home plate brings the bat to his shoulder. Parker. Gets the offering he wants. The 0-2 pitch. Outside, running away, ball one. That's the first ball thrown by Parker in this fourth inning. That's right. Been throwing strikes all, all the way up to then. Tied at one at the top of the fourth. Here's the 1-2. Swing and a miss. Perfect pitch again as Judy goes chasing and is out number two. For the second time, he strikes out. Apple hands the ball off to Parker, who is ready to now face the first of the two Landers. Hunter Landers, the center fielder. Long look from Parker, the first pitch on the way. Cut on and missed. Good strike there by Parker, just on the inside of this is the bat. He was trying to pull it back in, and he pulled it back in just too far, the 0-1. Out in front, Parker 0-2. Wow, no balls, two strikes. Huber looking for the final out, the pitch. Strike! Three called back-to-back -back Ks as Parker has gotten at least two strikeouts in three innings. He's up to seven Ks through four. As we go to the bottom of the fourth, Blake Bodie will lead things off from the number five spot in right field. You're listening to Colfax Baseball on 1450 KCLX and online at listentothegame.com. You're clear. 60. You got it. Sweet. Dylan and Hunter, Hunter are brothers? Okay. Didn't want to say it. And <laughs> Suddenly they're brothers, but they weren't before. <laughs> okay. Thank you. This one I didn't know, and I didn't want to guess. Well, it's better especially, than... Especially with people behind me going clunk. <laughs> better than guessing with the... When we don't know for other ones. Or when the play-by-play -play doesn't know. If they're oh, it, sisters or cousins or brothers or I told you about that. Second cut, yeah. The softball gets yeah. cold and it was like, well, no, no, no. certainly this one's <laughs> got to be. I go, and no. You, you would think that, wouldn't you? Nope. Being, cousins. Being, nope. Being Ten not from around here. <laughs> Thank you. That's what happens when we get all Back in five, four, answers. three, two, one. We welcome you back here to Asotin as it's Colfax leading off the bottom of the fourth with Blake Bodie, then followed by Kieran Anderson and Kellen Becker. So it's the outfield coming to the plate due up here in the fourth. Again, Bodie in right field, then Kieran from center and Kellen from left field. Colfax, of course, hoping that they can get more than that to the plate. They are tied at one still with the Panthers with Devin Fry continuing from the mound. Here comes the first pitch of the fourth, bottom half of the inning, and it's going to be ball one. Bodie. Went down looking on what he was told was a strike three and a 1-2 pitch. The 1-0 from Fry. Inside strike called, 1-1. One one. He was just the first one to see that pitch that a lot of people. Now a lot of them it, have seen it. Seen it since not then, but he it. was just the first one. 1-1 <laughs> one one as Fry takes a deep breath. Doesn't like what he gets from Marks now. He does from the windup, the pitch. Outside and a great job by Bodie to leave that one as it ends up bouncing in the other batter's box. As it started to come inside, and it looked like it might stay there, but then at the last second turned to the right for our perspective. The 2-1 pitch. Whoa. You don't see Blake move that much, but that one was way high and way tight, and Bodie said, no, nah, I don't want a part of that. <laughs> well, I keep calling the guy that never flinches, but he does. He's had to. Yeah, he's a couple had of to. These. That's this one he did. 
Three and one from Fry. The pitch on the way. Just found the zone and Blake content to keep it and leave it and see where it ends up. And it ends up in the zone three and two. So a full count. First full count to someone not named Kyle Apple from Devin Fry. The pitch. <laughs> Strike three called. Parker's been trying to get that call all day. And Bodie gets it going against him for out number one. So two times he's got caught looking at the last and disagreed with the call, but nothing you can do. Nothing you can do other than swing at it or yeah. walk away. Swing it, walk Whoa, away. Whoa, Kieran just gets a piece of it, didn't want to swing at it, and a check swing ends up as out number two. Barely off of the, well, the inside, about probably right where around his hands were on the back. He was kind of leaning back, kind of trying to protect himself just yeah. a little tiny bit. He was using the and bat almost, almost as a shield. <laughs> it was almost a reflex swing, and the, it caught the bat. First pitch to Becker is strike one as Fry now loses his hat for the second consecutive throw. I think I get that kid a tighter hat. No balls in two strikes. Sorry, no balls in one strike. Two is the two outs. Here comes the pitch. That one way outside in the other box, and Kellen watched it the whole way, leaned with it. Saw it go outside, ball one. On deck, the DH, hitting for Evan Henning. Mason Miller ready to go if Becker can reach. One and one, the pitch. Swings over the top of it for strike two. Kellen had the exact same count in the second before he bounced out over to third. Fry ready, Marks ready, Becker ready. Fry gets the sign from Marks. Becker ready with the 1-2 pitch on the way. Up and out for ball two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs on the board. Kellen trying to keep the inning alive for the Bulldogs as we're tied at one, bottom of the fourth inning here in Asotin. The 2-2 pitch. He did not go. Kellen does not go. They said the ball was out of the zone. And so that is ball three. Everybody <laughs> on the Panther side was headed to the dugout. Oh, man. And the home plate umpire checks down to first because he did not see it as a strike. And Kellen did not go around, so it's a full count payoff pitch. That's swing and a miss, and that will be the end of the inning. Colfax goes down in order a pair of strikeouts. One looking, one swinging, and the Bulldogs go to the top of the fifth. Back to the field they come, and they'll face Carson Juries first when we return here on 1450 KCLX and also online at listentothegame.com. You're clear. Uh, 60. You got it. Sweet. Lots of umpires here. I felt bad for Kellen. It was kind of anticlimactic. It was like, all oh, right, he's got another chance. And that's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Same here. I felt bad for Karen, too, because he was just, uh, just kind of leaning back and kind of just... Uh, it's like those strikes that that hit the back of the bat when it's well, just on their shoulder, and you're like, wait, how did that? Parker had one of those, and who else had one? Oh, man. Somebody else had one this year. Ten seconds. Yeah, I can't remember who the other one was. Thank you, EJ. Back in five, four, three, two, one. First pitch of the top of the fifth hits Carson Juries, and Carson scrambles down to first as he is the shortstop and now will stand at first his first time on. He struck out looking on a 2-2 pitch his first time up back in the second. First pitch hits him, and so now it's Dylan Landris, the second baseman, the younger of the two Landris brothers, as that one is inside for ball one. Dylan got a single on his first pitch that he saw from Parker, and then he was promptly picked off by Cal trying to steal second base back in that second inning. That was the third out of the inning. The second pitch to him is going to be popped out foul towards the first base side for strike one. No chance for Nate, Parker, or Cal to get to that one as that one was sharply hit off the bat and just the closest one to catch it would have been somebody from the dugout. 
Yeah, and they those don't count. Those don't count. But <laughs> that had a lot of air behind it for a for a bunt. It did. The one one ground ball towards his dugout this time as Landris making sure his teammates are paying attention. <laughs> Guys, are you watching me, Pat? Yeah. One and two. Everybody on both sides need to pay attention now. Yeah, right. Because he's hit two balls, both to the dugouts. The one-two pitch from Parker. Running outside. Pickoff try for Cows. He tries to throw it back as first base runner Carson Juries was off the bag. Nate was ready for it, so Cow fired it to him. Juries able to scramble his way back on almost on all fours, but he gets back two and two. The pitch. Cranked high up into the air. Kellen Becker takes some took steps. Nowhere, then finally comes running forward. Secures the catch for out number one as it's a fly out. The first action that Kellen's really had since the balls that were hit for singles out in left center field. In the first inning, yeah. So that ends up as out number one. Jury's unable to go anywhere, and we're back to the top of the order. And pitcher Devin Fry, as Josh Wilkinson will now step into the on-deck circle. So Fry ready at the plate. Parker from the stretch. Here's the first pitch. Ball one. Juries took his lead, and he's already, already quickly back to first. The 1-0. Bouncing in there. Cal ready to fire again. Two balls and no strikes. Again, between Cal and Elliott Marks, these are two of the best catchers we'll see in the league. <laughs> There's a little bit of a rivalry going on there, too, as both of them are trying to get throwouts. A little more than normal, I would assume. Elliott's had one and Cal's had one, so trying to get the one up on the I think there's a lot other. of competition going on there. 2-0, fouled away for strike one. That one's going to end up in the yard off of the underside of the roof of one of the houses behind us. Sharply hit. The dirt over there is certainly not dry, and that also, I think, hit off the concrete, but 2-1. <laughs> <Right. laughs> and exactly. one. Fouled away off of the pole. One of the poles holding up the fence here of the backstop. That evens the count. Two balls and two strikes. Parker trying to get out number two. Jury stands down at first for the Panthers. Top of the fifth. We're still tied at one. Two balls, two strikes. And the pitch. Ground ball back to Parker. He's going to go back to second for one. Henning to fire to first. Got him. Double, double play. play. One, four, three. Double play out of the inning. Bottom of the fifth when we come back. Led off by the designated hitter, Mason Miller here on 1450 KCLX and also online at listentothegame.com. Oops. You're clear. 60, please. You got it. Thank you. Uh, that's one way to make it a 1-2-3 inning. Well, so now it looks like 0-0-0, zero, zero, zero. No, no, no hits, no runs. No errors. But, Nobody left on base. But there was. <laughs> that's right. But that's not exactly where the ending. Ended. That's right. It wasn't anything like the ending before. All right, count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven pitches, lost two innings. I don't think pitch count is going to come into play here today. Don't say that. We might be off the radio, but we're still on the live stream. Ten seconds. <laughs> Don't pinks it. Pink's cat pitch count. Between both these, get two guys. It's impressive then. Yeah. Back in five, four, three, two, one. We welcome you back to the near start of the bottom of the fifth. Devin Fry getting his final bit of warm up pitches taken care of. And to kind of illuminate how it feels out here, again, not cold, nope. but Coach Parrish has gone from no sweatshirt to a sweatshirt. So. At least a little chilly in some of the places on the field. I'm assuming probably in the shaded areas, which is where he's been most of the time in the dugout. So out in the field of play now, Mason Miller batting eighth. Will lead off here in the bottom of the fifth, followed by number nine in the order, Lane Gingrich. And then to the top of the order, Cal Gregory are your three due up to face off with starter Devin Fry, who continues here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Tied at one, the first pitch of the bottom of the fifth from Fry to Miller is on the way. Oh, inside as Mason has to really avoid wearing that one as it nearly got him in the stomach. Ball one. Had to suck in his stomach. Yeah, yeah, a lot. The 1-0. Strike one. Bottom of the zone. One and one. Fry comes set as a deep breath in. 
Gets the sign from Marks, the 1-1 one -one pitch. Mason cranks it high up into the air. It's going to go just into the outfield as the center fielder, and nobody gets it. Miller's going to get in safely because, well, the shortstop juries and the center fielder, Hunter Landers, couldn't decide where the ball was. That sun, Randy, might have just come into play as the sun is just poking through right into where I think Hunter Landers would have been looking at. Well, you got the sun that was a little bit low, but also you got a lot of gray sky right above. Kind of was hesitating, kind of running forward, stopping and running forward a little yeah. bit as Landers was going out there and just lost a little bit. And I think it, well, who knows if the ball changed direction out there anyway. Lane trying to show bunt. The ball gets away. He's going to get the runner to second just by showing the bunt as Miller scrambles down to second base. So Mason gets a base hit <laughs> off of the confusion from shortstop and center field. And now Lane... Could have a chance to move him all the way to third or bring him home. Marks wants to have a chat with Fry. Yeah, it's a good time to do that. As it was not a bad pitch as much as it just didn't execute the way he wanted it to because it bounced way out in front of home and Marks tried to stop it. It ended up awkwardly bouncing off of him and ended up way out into the left half of the uh, spot behind home plate as... I started to hesitate because I wasn't sure if they were going to start a pitching change or just a conversation as they are going to at least have a chat well, on the top of the mound. The entire infield comes in with their head coach for the Panthers as Coach Parrish for the Bulldogs goes to have a chat with Lane Gingrich. And now here comes Cal Gregory on deck. Everybody's got something to say now. Everybody wants to Lots join in on conversations. The outfield doesn't have anything to say, but the whole infield, they got a long conversation. And this is... Uh, and Cal kind of... This is not the head coach. This isn't Holman. This is Black, I think. I think you're right. Uh, Holman is standing off over here. He's got his arms on the dugout. By the way, I think the the other assistant coach is his birthday. He's giving him balloons and cake before the, before oh, the game. Oh, very nice. Um, and if not his birthday, very close then. <laughs> well, good enough to give him a cake and there balloons. There you go. There you go. I don't know. I'm not a, really a tracker of that, but... <laughs> Opposing coaches. I was going to say, not for <laughs> guys that are on our, not on our own team. Yes. Yeah. Opposing assistant coaches. Yep, I've got it all written down. <laughs> down at second is Miller. Nobody out. Mason takes his lead. Gingrich with the bat bouncing up and down. 1-0 count from Fry. Golfs it. Left field. Fair ball. Miller charging for to third. He's going to be giving the wave around. And it's misplayed by Judy. And scoring is Mason Miller as Lane ends up at second base. And the Bulldogs have a 2-1 lead. Wow. Nice hit by Lane Gendrich. First pitch thrown after the, well, the big long timeout. Usually you see, you teams see a little bit of a spurt, but here again, that ball was hit just, well, just a couple feet fair, but then it bounced to, uh, after it went past third base, it bounced into the foul territory, making it very difficult for Judy to handle. Taron tried to get to it. He tried to barehand it because he knew he had to hurry with Miller, who was already at third right. by the time Judy got to the ball. And then he could not control it as he went for the barehanded grab. And that's a first pitch strike to Cal. So Fry trying to get back going in the right direction. And he has found a first pitch strike against Cal in all three plate appearances for Gregory. Lane takes his lead at second. He did get to second on the throw and the misplay by Judy, the pitch. Cal golfs it foul as he bounces it towards the third base dugout where the Panthers reside for strike two. So Gingrich, the bottom of the order comes through for the Bulldogs as Miller gets on first, gets to second, and he's sent home by Gingrich. Said it early on, said it in the second inning. Lane is just, we continue to see him get better as the season goes along. The 0-2 pitch from Fry to Cal. Cal thought about it, checked his <laughs> swing and regained the bat, and it's one and two. Well, this position in the game, you just got to think twice every time they throw a pitch. That's right. Got a really. He, he, he used his twice, maybe more. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very cerebral and very quick thinker out there on the field. It's one and two to count. Kind of competitive. Yeah, a little bit. Kind of. <laughs> the one-two pitch on the way from Fry. Inside swing and a miss as Cal tried to catch up to it as it was coming back way inside as he tried to, what would have been another golf shot. Kyle Apple will step to the plate. Kyle walked back in the first, helped Cal move up as well, and then Cal would come around to score thanks to Nate Atkinson's base hit back in the first. It's 2-1, to one. Colfax with the lead. The pitch to Kyle. Ball one. 
Kyle Apple, the most patient batter Colfax has had today. Right. Both times he's been up, full counts. Went first pitch swing the first two times. This time he waits and takes. Ball one. Gingrich down at second. The 1-0 pitch. Waits and has this one. Dive out of the zone on a curveball. Ball two. Kyle seems to be the one batter that Fry has not really been able to, to figure out. As he, Like you said, he's been the only one that has had two three-ball counts, and he's one ball away from a third one, and they were both, obviously, like you said, full counts earlier. Correct. 2-0. and oh. Lane takes his lead. Fry looks back at him at second base. Here's the 2-0. Time is called by Kyle. And granted. Fry had been taking some time on a lot of those, and Kyle finally took advantage of it. Two balls, no strikes. One on, one out. Two to one lead for the Bulldogs here in the bottom of the fifth. Fry with a long look in. Still long. Now he comes set. The 2-0 on the way. Strike one. He's <laughs> really close. I thought Kyle might call time again. <laughs> it's a long wait. This is a long at bat. We've had a couple long ones with Kyle yeah. already against Fry, but this one, I mean, now we're going to a slow-moving chess match. Two balls and a strike. Lane at second. The pitch. Golfed out into right center field. Going back. This one is long. This one is deep and bounces up and at the wall. Coming around to score is Lane. Kyle will stand at second with an RBI double. And it's the Bulldogs with three on the board now. Two runs in the inning. Kyle Apple with an RBI double. Pretty good day for Kyle Apple. Had, uh, well, he's... Got on by a walk and also a, a single, now a double as that ball was hit. I wasn't sure that was not going to bounce out. I thought it was going to bounce over. Yeah, I thought it was going to bounce out. And then No ground rule double, earned it, just and legged it out. 3-1 to one, Colfax. Parker Huber at the dish, the, the pitch. Parker slaps one down towards third base. He's going to charge over to first. Throw back to Kyle, who's over at second. The throw from... Hurlburt gets into center field, and Kyle's going to get all the way to third. So Kyle, who was being patient and not going to take off for third anyway, he gets given the opportunity because the throw from Hurlburt ended up bouncing away from second baseman Dylan Landris as it was a low throw, and Dylan just couldn't quite handle it. So Kyle gets down to third with Nate Ackeson at the plate. Again, Huber is out on the fielder's choice, but it does move Kyle over. Exactly, and I think you just try to rush that throw just a little tiny bit. I agree. Trying to get one in Huber at first, but also trying to get uh, Kyle, and it didn't look like there was going to be much chance to get Kyle, and Kyle was just kind of, yeah, I'm back here at second, and realized the ball was going into center field. There was no one there to get it, so he charged for third and took it. First pitch to Nate is ball one. Ackeson has been stuck at first twice. He's reached twice. That's the good part. He's had a single that scored Cal and a walk. And then he got stuck at first after Kyle was thrown out at second base. The 1-0 pitch from Fry. Right back up the middle towards the shortstop. Up with the ball and firing to first is just going to be in time. Juries to Hurlbert. And that'll do it for the inning. But Colfax gets themselves a two-run lead. It's 3-1 to one Bulldogs. Top of the sixth when we return here on 1450 Casey Lex and online at listen to the game.com. You're clear. Uh, 60. You got it. Okay, just in there. So two. That worked out. <laughs> Bottom of the order. Yeah, how about eight and nine doing their jobs? Gotta love that. Okay, what'd you give Lane? I gave Lane a base hit. Well, I didn't know if you would give him a double. I didn't think you'd give him a double. Oh, I gave him a single, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's, oh yeah, it was a base hit. Yeah, I gave him a clearly, single. Clearly a base hit. I just didn't know if you gave him a single or a double. Yeah, I gave him a single because jury's, jury having issues out and uh, left is what made me give him just a single because I was like, eh. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I, I wasn't. I also wasn't sure if I should give him the RBI or not. Oh, yeah. Did you? Yeah. Okay. I thought. Yeah, I just wasn't sure. I wanted the second I opinion. <laughs> Oof. Oops. Well, already. Yeah, they are not taking their time. They're just going. <clears throat> 
15 seconds. Thank you. You are back in five, four, three, two, one. We welcome you back to the top of the sixth. The Bulldogs and Panthers not wasting any time getting back and going as it's two and two to Josh Wilkinson. Here's the pitch from Huber. Swing and a foul off. Just got a piece of it. If he hadn't, Cal was going to be ready to throw down to first, but Josh knew that he got a t uh, just a tick of it and sent it foul. Still count at two and two. Colfax leading by two. Here comes the pitch. Strike three called as Wilkinson goes down looking on the 2-2 outside corner pitch. So Huber finds the spot. And now it's Elliot Marks coming to the plate. Again, the real bugaboo for the Bulldogs as he's got a double and a single to his right. name. He's well, got an RBI as well. The only run on the board came off his bat. Ball one. you got to say the second in order for both these two teams, and Cal Apple and Joshua Wilkerson, have been the offensive um, stars for each team. The 1-0 misses. Ball two. Parker trying to see what Marks will go for. He has not gone for either of the first two pitches. Two balls and no well, strikes. I guess. The pitch. That one finds the zone. Two and one. Also just trying to find where that outside top part of the zone was. Found it there. Two balls and a strike. The pitch. Ball three as it started at the middle of the plate and then curved outside at the bottom. Three and one. The pitch from Parker. Oh, that hit Cal. Three balls and two strikes now. Cal says to the home plate umpire, I'm good. Yeah. Immediately making sure, yeah, we're good. No, I can no keep going. No problems here. Full count and a payoff pitch to Marks from Huber. Likes the second. Here comes the pitch. Hammered foul over the netting wow. and way out into the house yard, the, way off to our right. I don't think we've ever seen one go that far, that hard foul. I think that went two houses back, but <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Three yeah. and two. Up into the air, Bodie with a chance to play it. Looking for it, finding it, trying to find where it's going to go, and he makes the catch. Blake did a great job from the word go, and maybe not even the word, but the crack of the bat to immediately find where that ball was going, and he tracked it the whole way and gets out number two. At the plate, number four in the order, Noah Renzelman, the third baseman. Parker set. Here's the first pitch to Noah. Up high into the air. This one not very deep. Trying to find it was Kieran. Bodie had a great beat on it. And out number three recorded on the first pitch to Renzelman. Wow. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Colfax will try to add some insurance runs before the top of the seventh. It'll be Bodie, Anderson, and Becker, your three outfielders, up next at the plate in the bottom of the sixth here on 1450 Casey Lex and online at listentothegame.com. Cool. Cool. 60. Cool. Kyle's going down to warm up. Well, I don't know if they'll. I'm assuming that's like just precautionary. We'll find out though. Sparker's been dealing at the end. Fry 81 now. Okay, so he's got six. 19. After five, you mean? Oh, excuse me. Did you mean to say Parker? Parker. <laughs> 10 seconds. Perfect. Back in five, four, three, two, one. We welcome you back to the bottom of the sixth. Your three outfielders are due up here for the Colfax Bulldogs in the bottom half of the fourth inning. It's Colfax three, a Soton one. Both teams scored a run in the first. Colfax then put on a pair in the bottom of the fifth. We'll see if they can add any here in the sixth as it's the three outfielders starting first with the right fielder, Blake Bodie, to face off with Devin Fry for the third time. Devin with a long look into Marks, and here comes the first pitch to Blake. 
Blake sends it on the ground towards third, and it just goes foul. Bodie's had enough chances that have been called strike three that he didn't like that he said, fine, I'll take the first pitch you give me that I like, and I'm going to send it on a ride, and unfortunately it went on the ground, but got contact, and it's 0-1. Just doing a little bit of math, 86 pitches. Um, unofficially. Unofficially for Fry. Well, now 87. 81 for Parker. Yeah, baby. Oh, so close. Another one right down the third baseline, strike two. So Blake has been on a 1-2 count, a 3-2 count. Now 0-2, he'll have to fight and battle this one. So Blake has seen two pitches that he liked, and he swung and hit both of them. They just both went foul, nothing in two. Fry with a long look to Marks. Still waiting for that pitch that he wants. Here it comes, the 0-2 pitch. Fouled off into the netting and stays at 0-2. Karen retrieves. Fry with a new baseball. Colfax again, two runs in the bottom of the fifth. Take, gives them this 3-1 to one advantage. Trying to add some runs before the top of the seventh. Bodie behind 0-2, but battling with Fry. The 0-2 pitch. Just got a piece of it. And that'll help. Nice battle by Bodie. And that's what I heard the dugout say a little bit. Is yeah. He's fouled off a couple here. That's what you need to do down 0-2. Just fight off whatever you think might be a strike. Strike doing changes when you're got 0-2 count against you. No balls and two strikes. Fry ready and firing from the windup. Perfect pitch oh. as it started on the inside, and it came back outside and went right in the middle of the zone. Bodie goes down for the third time looking. Bodie just could not catch a break on those first two at-bats, and this time he... Just tried to be the aggressor, and it still came out against him. One out. First pitch to Kieran. Strike one. Anderson struck out swinging on the third pitch in the first inning. He bounced out on an awkward check swing that he was trying to pull back that it went off of his bat right to the pitcher. and Exactly. Ends up being retired that way. This one sent skyward, hit it on the barrel, but it's going to go out into center field and caught and snow coned and trying to jump out of the glove of Hunter Landers, but it does stay in for out number two. So the third of your, your outfielders who were due up at the plate now in Kellen Becker with two down. Kellen will try to get Mason Miller a chance at the plate to keep the inning going. Two outs, nobody on as Fry tries to finish off the sixth. Long look for Devin. Now he starts the windup. The first pitch to Kellen is up high for ball one. Becker a ground out to third and a strikeout. He is one of the only full counts that Fry has thrown to someone not named Kyle Apple. <laughs> I went outside for ball two. So Kellen and Bodie are the only two that have full counts other than Kyle, who has two by himself. <laughs> two balls and no strikes from Fry. E inside, ball three. And actually... I flinched more than Kellen just did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three and oh. <laughs> Fry, long look from the windup, the pitch. Ball four. Kellen works himself a four-pitch walk. Surprisingly. Randy said Devin was up near 86. Again, unofficially. Well, so he's got to be getting closer. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. It's 97. So he's three away. So I think I know, once you start a, pit, a batter, I think you're allowed to finish them. Unlike last year, which is when you hit 100, you were done. First pitch strike to Miller. And I could be wrong, and that we'll find out shortly. Yep. Again, if we are... Uh, and I could be correct off. Correct at, yeah. at 97. There's a chance. I've been off one time. The 0 1. Strike two. Mason Miller, hero in the fifth, a base hit, got to second on a pass ball. Home brought in by Lane Gingrich, the man on deck. No balls and two strikes. Becker down at first, one on, and two out. The 0 2 pitch to Miller on the way. And. Hits 100 on the dot again unofficially. That's the strikeout looking as Miller goes down, and the Bulldogs will have a two-run lead to try to close things out 
top of the seventh will be led off by Mason Hurlbert, fifth in the order, first baseman. We'll be right back here for the seventh inning on 1450 KCLX and also online at listentothegame.com. You're clear. 60. Ba, 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 ba. The left on. Yep. Oh. Seemed like Devin made that one personal to, to Mason. He was like, "Oh, you got the, you were the reason that they scored a run before." Oh, I don't like that. Hey, it's four four in the bottom of the eighth on the other game. Thank you. Yep. Fifteen seconds, by the way. Perfect. Back in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to Asoton, Washington. Matthew Zimmer, Randy Stickle here with you as Colfax on the baseball side leads things three to one. Top of the seventh, Mason Hurlbert, the first baseman, steps up to face Parker Huber. Ball one. By the way, we got notification that on the softball side, tight one, also four to four in the eighth. Perfect pitch by Parker right down Broadway for strike one. Count even at one apiece. So we're already got extra innings, and if it goes to ninth, then things. Ball two. Again, you can check softball out over on AM 840, KMAX the Max, also on listentothegame.com. That third ball thrown by Parker. He's behind three and one as the Asotan dugout giving Hurlbert lots of support. The pitch right down the heart of the plate. Strike two. Three balls, two strikes. Full count for Parker. The payoff. Fouled away. In on the hands. And Hurlbert has to swing to keep himself alive as the ball just gets on the other side of the fence. That's over there by one of the houses. Another payoff pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Hurlbert goes down with a K. And that one for Parker Huber puts him now at nine. 80, 88. 88 pitches unofficially for Parker. Yeah, according to this inaccurate we have calculator. To say, <laughs> we have to say unofficial just because, unfortunately, we are not the book. Well, maybe fortunately for some people. Strike one to Taryn Judy, who has had a really long day facing Parker Huber. A 2-2 strikeout, a 1-2 strikeout, and he's now behind 0-1 after showing bunt at the first pitch. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Ball one. Parker had two Ks in the first, two in the second, two in the fourth to go along with one in the third, sixth, and now one in here in the seventh. So again, nine total, the 1-1. Outside, ball two. Colfax leading by two. Time is called as Judy just leaves. <laughs> I think it was called before, but it was officially called by the home plate umpire after Judy was halfway down to the third base box. Kyle Apple goes to have a chat with Parker. And it will be two balls and a strike for Taryn Judy, your left fielder for the Panthers, as the sun has disappeared behind a big dark cloud behind us, the 2-1. Clocked foul. Wow. Two and two. That had a lot of velocity behind it. Yes, it did. That was the, I think that was the deepest shot we've seen for anyone other than Elliot Marks for okay, the Panthers. It was, yeah, there was somebody else that hit down there. That was Marks, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. I two think and right. two. Judy facing Parker. Here comes the pitch. Ball three up. And the second straight full count of the inning. Parker not. Leaving out the stress. Three and two. Full count with one out. The payoff. Ball four. Right on the outside corner, that's right. Coach Parrish wants to know where he thought it was. Home plate umpire wasn't looking at him at all. So he asks Cal where it was, and Cal kind of looked down and went, I don't know. <laughs> because he doesn't want to get in trouble with the umpire. <laughs> Judy, down at first now. The tying run will come to the plate in the form of the center fielder, Hunter Landris. One out. 
Hunter takes a long look after having a quick conversation with the third base coach. Now he digs in. A right-handed battle between Landris and Huber. Parker steps off as he wasn't liking where he was set, so he steps off. He's set from the stretch. The pitch. First pitch strike. One thing that, again, we've talked about before that I appreciate with Cal is that he gets back up, fires the ball straight back to the pitcher. No if ands, or buts about it. That one right to, to Gingrich, back to first. That one hit him. And he's safe. It, that's fortunate for the Panthers as the ball hits Judy. Landris lines out to the shortstop and Lane with a perfect catch. The throw was on line. Unfortunately, it was right in line with the feet of Taryn Judy. So that meant that Judy got back to the bag before the ball did. And right. Now we've got juries. Carson juries, the shortstop. Oh, and Cal. Cal's ready to end this game now as he almost <laughs> fired down to first to Nate for a tag out. 0-1 oh to juries. Parker from the stretch, the pitch. Up and in, ball one. One ball, one strike. Number eight in the order, juries at the plate. He was hit by a pitch his last time up. The 1-1 one, one pitch with two out. Outside corner, strike two. Parker looking over at first, seeing what Judy's trying to do. Checks back over there again. A ball and two strikes. The pitch. Swing and a miss. That's the ball game. Parker Huber pitches a gem. Wow. Strikeout number 10 wraps it up. And it's Colfax three, a Soton one. Over in seven, we'll take a break, and when we come back, your post-game show is next here on 1450 KCLX and also online at listentothegame.com. You're clear. Uh, do we have any spots we have to hit? No, we do not. Okay, let's do two minutes. You got it. Thank you. Right on the nose. They both hit 100. That's incredible. That's the way I saw it. All right, that's exactly where they are playing in each spot. But here's your Colfax lineup on the mound. Will be Kyle Gregory. He'll pitch to Kyle Apple. Over at first base will be Nate Atkinson. So I guess I'll give you the defensive lineman, not the starting lineup. Uh, again, Nate over at first. You've got at second base Evan Henning. Your shortstop will be uh, Parker Huber. At third base, Lane Gingrich. Kellen Becker will be out in left field. Right field, excuse me, center field will be Kieran Anderson. And right field will be Blake Bodie. Colfax wearing their all-black jerseys. Colfax in blue in cursive across the front of the jerseys, outlined in gold. Gold numbers on the back of the jerseys and on the front for the Bulldogs. And those oh-so-sweet gold hats with the dark blue C on them. I'm really digging these gold hats, Randy. I know, I know that we've talked about them a couple <laughs> times. We didn't have them last year. They, they look really nice. We've had them a few years ago, but it's I can't. Not just as a, such a great wardrobe guy. I can't remember how many years ago it was, but... It has been a few years, so nevertheless, it looks like the top of the order for uh, Asotin will be, they'll start off with Devin Fry and Joshua Wilkerson, just like they did in the first game. I don't know who will be after that, but we do see them warming <laughs> up as we're not that far away. That's right. From first pitch, as Cal is getting one more warm-up pitch, which they, of course, will throw down to second base as the final pitch for Kyle Apple to get his one big throw down, and then we will be off and running with first pitch, as again, the Bulldogs will be your home team for the second game in a row here in Asotin. As it was scheduled to be that way, Colfax taking on the Panthers at home. However, uh, the field deciding not to cooperate. All kidding aside, the weather also not helping at all in that department either. So Colfax on the defensive side will face off with Devin Fry up first. And that's who we've got coming to the plate to face Cal Gregory for the first pitch. Here comes. Fouled away for strike one. On deck again is Wilkinson. As Randy mentioned. The second pitch from Cal. Popped up. Playable. Nate says he's got it. Nate does in his glove. Wow. Out number one as it was Kyle and Cal, the catcher and pitcher, who were talking <laughs> it out. And then Nate realized... I have the best play at that. 
and well, came out from first base area in the dirt and ended up almost in foul territory. He had a lot of distractions because he had, first of all, he has Cal coming down to him. Then he has the runner, Devin Fry, coming right at him, too. Yep, and right down the baseline. He's got to pay attention to all of that. First pitch to Josh Wilkinson inside for ball one. On deck, Elliot Marks. Ball one. The 1-0. -oh. Golfed up high into the air, deep to left field. That's Kellen Becker going back. Kellen's got it in his glove for out number two. Two pitches per batter, two outs <laughs> on the board. Well, that could be efficient. Of course, you can, you got to get to three, but You're right. as Kellen Becker didn't go far away from where he started, he kind of just circled left a little bit, goes right a little bit, circles back, and ended up packing where he started. Yes, indeed he did. <laughs> Kellen out in left field again for the second straight game. Cal on the bump. Ready to face with Elliot Marks. These two had a catcher's competition of a certain extent in game one where Cal was trying to throw out batters. Marks trying to throw out batters. Having a long conversation with the umpire, Mark. Did not like strike one. I don't know. But he took it. No balls in a strike. Cal the long look into Kyle. Here's the 0-1. Ground ball headed towards third lane. Has an awkward bounce as it ends up at his shoulders. And it ends up into left field. Becker will retrieve. Get it back into the cutoff man, Parker Huber, who was very in tight. And another strong start for Elliott Marks. He was two for three in the first game. And the home plate umpire and third base coach having a conversation with our home plate umpire. And a little heated here in the top of the first. Hmm. Okie dokie. Renzelman up now for yeah. the, the Soton Panthers. Noah Renzelman. With a, quite a bit of conversation there. Noah will pop this one shallow right to Parker Huber. First pitch swing is out number three. We'll take a break. And when we come back, it's the bottom of the first with Colfax leading things off when we return here on 1450 KCLX and also online at listen to the game.com. You're clear. Thank you. Seven pitches. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> yep. Two each, the first three. Yes. And then done. Like we've said before, Cal will attack you. Uh, did you give him a hit or an error? I gave him a hit. That okay. was a tough hop. Okay. I don't blame Lynn one uh, bit. That's what I would have, but I want to make sure. Yeah, you know, no worries. We double check. Fifteen seconds. Thank you. Back in five, four, three, two. One. Welcome back to Asotan, Washington. Matthew Zimmer, Randy Stickle here with you as the Colfax Bulldogs take on the Asotan Panthers for the second game of their doubleheader. Starting lineups for the Bulldogs. It will be Cal Gregory batting first and pitching. Kyle Apple from behind home plate batting second. Parker here with a shortstop will go third. Nate Ackeson, your first baseman, fourth. Blake Bodie, the right fielder, fifth. Kieran Anderson, your center fielder, will go sixth. Kellen Becker, the left fielder, will go seventh. Designated hitter Mason Miller batting eighth. He will bat in place of second baseman Evan Henning. And Lane Gingrich, the third baseman, will bat ninth. It's almost, actually, is the exact same order, just the difference is where each individual is playing for some of them. And Colfax will be facing off with Noah Renzelman, who will be your starting pitcher here for... Game number two, Elliot Marks still behind home plate. Over at first base will still be Mason Hurlbert. Excuse me, Devin Fry will actually be over at first base. My apologies. Yeah, I was thinking. Uh, over at second base will be still Dylan Landris. The shortstop is still Carson Juries. Third base is where Mason Hurlbert lines up. And then we do not have a guarantee on the outfield positions at this time. Again, we did not get a lineup before the start, so we're just playing catch-up as we... Get ready for the first pitch of the bottom of the first, tied at zero. Cal smacks one, foul. And it ends up 
harmlessly in the dirt by the parking lot, which is nice for all of those of us who parked over there. <laughs> Strike one. Facing off with Renzelman. No balls and a strike. Long look from Noah and the 0-1. Bottom of the zone for strike two. So again, Cal, your starting pitcher. Kyle Apple, your catcher. And Parker here with a shortstop. Your three due up in the inning. No balls, two strikes as Renzelman takes a long look and now fires from the windup. Bounces in and away from Marks and heads down towards the third base dugout. Retrieved there by one of the Asotan coaches. Noah gets a new baseball and he's ready to go. A ball and two strikes as he gets back up on top of the mound. Coach Wayne Gregory down at first. Scotty Parrish, the head coach, down at third. One and two. Renzelman gets the sign from Marks. Long looking, still not happy with the call. And now he gets one he likes. One and two, the pitch. Cal check swings as he wasn't sure if it was going to end up coming back inside, so he started to put a swing and then checked it, and it ends up foul. Awfully close to Kyle Apple standing over there. Good thing he's paying attention. It went behind him and ended up getting all the way to the dugout. And Kyle ready to go. Cal in the box, ready. One and two. Renzelman from the windup. Here comes the pitch. Cal a slap out into right field. Will it stay fair? No. Oh. Strike Two will stay on the count. Perfectly placed in between the first baseman and the right fielder. <laughs> Josh Wilkinson will continue to play out in right fielder, able to confirm that. Still trying to figure out who's out in center and left. I can't quite see their numbers out there without them turning around. But it does look like the same guys out there from earlier. One and two is the count to Cal from Renzelman. The pitch. Up and in, ball two. Two balls and two strikes, the count. Kyle still waiting patiently in the on-deck circle. Kyle trying to battle his way aboard. Two balls, two strikes. Long look from Renzelman, he comes set, fires from the windup. Swing and a miss, did he catch it? They say yes. He's out. No call from the home plate umpire and until Marks looked back at him and said, I caught that. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, yeah. you did. <laughs> yeah. I think he actually signaled he did. pretty quickly, to be honest with you. I don't know if we could hear him or not. Right. So Marks just clarifying as the catcher. He'll face, now he'll help his pitcher face the catcher for the Bulldogs. It's Kyle Apple at the plate. Up and in for ball one. Kyle was the... Big guy at the top of the order for Colfax, reaching all three times, a walk, a single, and a double. The 1-0 pitch from Renzelman to Kyle Apple. In the zone for strike one. Center fielder for the Panthers, straightaway center, and trying to shade himself as the sun has popped back out. 1-1. One one. Up and away. Ball two. Hasn't fully popped out from behind the clouds, but at least we can see more daylight than we were seeing earlier. The sun is behind us, but the clouds, the darkest clouds, are right on top of us. That is true. Two and one with one out. Inside pitch well found there by Renzelman. Kyle swings and misses for strike two. Same count that Renzelman got Gregory on a swing and a miss. Two and two. Long look from Renzelman. Still looking. From the windup, here comes the pitch. Three. Strike three called as Kyle gets caught looking. Same spot that Blake Bodie and others didn't like in game one. Two outs. Parker Huber, the shortstop, will step to the plate. And he'll try to get on in front of the lefty, Nate Ackeson. Tied at zero so far with Parker at the dish. Two outs. Nobody on. Renzelman fires the first pitch. Up and in for ball one. Parker, a stellar game again. Another 10-plus strikeout performance. 10 on the dot to end the game. On that 10th strikeout, the 1-0. Cut on, missed. 1-1. One one. But again, Parker only allowing one run 
That one in the first. Ten strikeouts. Only allowed three more hits the rest of the way. A 1-1 pitch coming from Renzelman. It's on the way. Fouled away for strike two. Nate will, Nate will take the ball and bring it back with him to the on-deck circle. Hoping that he gets his opportunity. Certainly is. One and two. Two outs. Parker at the dish. The righty delivers. Parker golfs it high up into the air. Says he has it himself. Renzelman does retire Parker Huber. Out number three recorded. A one, two, three inning. As the Bulldogs will go back out on defense, Cal Gregory will turn to the mound, and we'll be right back here on 1450 KCLX and online at listentothegame.com. You're clear. A 60. You got it. Lots of conversations. Uh, yeah. Okay. Next. Still haven't got the lineup figured out yet. Nope. 16. I don't even have ours. It's Herbert. Nothing different there. Nope. Back in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to Asotin. Matthew Zimmer, Randy Stickle here with you as the Bulldogs and Panthers are tied at zero. Top of the second. Hammered down the left field side. Becker going back, trying to find it, trying to get to it. Couldn't scoop it underneath. It's going to be a base hit. Going for two is Hurlbert. Getting it back in is Becker. And... Stopping at second base for a double is Mason Hurlbert. So he gets a double, the third baseman, with a shot to left field as Taryn Judy, the left fielder, will step in now. And then on deck will be Hunter Landris, who is playing out in center field. First pitch to Judy is fouled off for strike one. And Cal willing and ready to go in attack mode, and that's what he did against Hurlburt. And Mason sent it for a ride for a double. So Cal already dealing with a runner in scoring position here, top of the second. One on with an 0 1 count to Judy, the pitch. Just got a piece of it, strike two. So Hunter Landris is on deck, center fielder. Be the third man who was due up here in the inning. No balls, two strikes. Cal leans in from the stretch. He'll come set the pitch. Good off-speed stuff from Cal Gregory as he gets Judy to go down one, two, three. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Just that quick. I mean, we have, we've had some quick up at bats here already in this uh, second game. A lot more than we did in the first game, which were that first inning took a long time. A lot of pitches thrown. Yes, it did. First pitch to Hunter Landris, the center fielder, on the way. Ball one. Kyle snared it. Was ready to throw down to second in case Hurlbert got any ideas. Mason did not, and he retreats back to second. A ball and no strikes. Cal ready. He set from the stretch, the 1-0. Ground ball headed towards third is foul. So Landris will have to come back to the box, and he'll face one and one. Excuse me, from Cal Gregory. So Hulbert did go back to second also. Did run off a little bit, but saw that the ball was hitting down to third and knew he couldn't go very far. Right. The 1-0. Excuse me, the 1-1. Now 1-2. One and two. Landris behind and looking at a 1-2 count. Cal leans in. Doesn't like the first from Kyle, likes the second. The one-two pitch. Ball up and in, ball two. Carson Juries, the shortstop, is on deck. 
Two balls, two strikes, a runner at second base with one down. Top of the second, the pitch. Low for ball three. Count comes full. First one we've seen in the second game. That's right, three and two. Cal set from the stretch, the payoff. Swing and a miss. Landris goes fishing and misses as Jury swings and misses, and he's strikeout number two in a row for Cal. Carson yeah. Jury's at the plate, and Dylan Landris, the second baseman, is your last one in the order for the Panthers. First pitch to Carson is a perfectly placed strike on the outside corner. That last pitch thrown to Hunter Landris, he put a lot more on the ball. You've seen mm -hmm. people taking it off. Mm -hmm. He added. Nothing in one. Here comes the pitch. Little pop into the infield. Nate says, I got it, and he does. Ackeson retires. Out number three as we head to the bottom of the second. Colfax, four, five, and six, middle of the order. Ackeson, Bodie, and Anderson. When we come back on 1450 KCLX and online at listentothegame.com. You're clear. Uh, 60. You got it. Thank you. I still don't have the Soton's positions very well. I have them. Okay. Fry. Top to bottom. First base. Right field. Catcher. Pitcher. Third base. Left field. Center field. Shortstop. Second base. I think the only ones that moved were Renzelman and Fry. I think they literally just switched spots. That's, I guess you're right. Oops. Look. Okay, we need to get somebody on. That is the goal. And then home. Right. You knew I knew a little bit about it, didn't you? You knew I knew that inside information. Yeah, very. <laughs> My throat's a little bit scratchy. Oh, well. I don't blame you. It's water here. Next inning. 15 seconds. Thank you. They're really hustling back. <laughs> Pushing this game because of yep. the weather. Yep. Back in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to Asoten. Matthew Zimmer, Randy Stickle with you. Bottom of the second. It's. The Bulldogs zero and the Panthers zero. Colfax again, your home team. They'll bat here in the bottom half of the second. Ackeson, Bodie, and Anderson. Nate is at the plate behind 0-1. The pitch. Up and in for ball one. Nate playing in his same spot as he did and most of the bottom of the order also playing in their same spots as we'll get you that in just a second. Renzelman. Long look in at the lefty. The pitch. Nate sends a smack out into right field, diving for it and making the catch. Josh wow. Wilkinson, what a grab on the dive. Wow. A Superman head first dive, and he makes the catch. I thought that was going to drop for sure. Wilkerson, like you say, flew, diving, caught it in air. Excellent catch from Josh wow. Wilkinson as that's out number one. Colfax still looking for their first hit. As, by the way, did need wanted to do, do this, do the do. Give due credit to Renzelman. He got all three outs in the first inning. Two strikeouts and a pop out to himself. Ground ball by Bodie. It stayed fair. It hopped over the bag and an easy out number one is followed by, or a tough out number one is followed by an easy out number two as it was bounced right to Devin Fry. And unfortunately, a three unassisted there gets Blake Bodie as he goes first pitch swing. Well, our only hope there was that it was going to bounce foul. Right. Kick foul off of some piece of dirt or something. The pitch to Kieran is fouled off. Strike one. So again, Kieran playing center field. Becker on deck playing left field. Mason Miller, the DH after that. And then Lane Gingrich, the third baseman, batting ninth. Again, the only batter not in the lineup is the same man who was not in the first game, which would be Evan Henning playing at second base. The 0-1 is popped up and playable. Renzelman says he has it, and he does. And that's it for the Bulldogs in the second, one, two, three, in order down they go. Colfax will go to the top of the third when we come back on 1450 KCLX and online at listen to the game.com. 
You're clear. I don't know if we can do it. Let's try 90, though. 90? Yeah. You got it. We need to because of no breaks for pregame. Right. Otherwise, it's going to be a long postgame. <laughs> oh, that was a weird pop on oh, my back. <laughs> that was not a good pop. Bad pop? Seconds. Thank you. Back in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to a Soton Matthew Zimmer. Randy Stickle with you as Dylan Landris went first pitch swing and sent it into the gap between the second and shortstop, and it ends up into center field. So a base hit for Landris. He's on at first. Devin Fry at the plate. He's behind 0-1. Devin popped up to Nate as the first batter of the game in the first inning. Shot to right field and way foul. That'll be strike two. So he watched strike one. He hacks at strike two. And now behind 0-2. Well, right now Cal throwing only strikes. So far in this inning, you're right. The 0-2. Popped up. This one out into the gap. Here Anderson going back. Kieran, running grab, makes the catch and throws it back into the infield and forces Landris to scatter back to first base. Out number one. It's a good play there by Kieran and a good run out there by the center fielder. Exactly. A couple of good contact hits by Landris and Fry. That one just ends up in the glove of just Anderson. Exactly. Top of the third, tied at zero, runner on first. Wilkinson at the plate. Ball ends up in the dirt. It gets past Kyle. He's going to come grab it. And they're going to say ball one. Wasn't sure if there was a foul or not. Checking down at second base. No swing. So ball one. Josh Wilkinson had a one ball count when he flew out to Kellen Becker in the first. Down at second is Dylan. The pitch. Fouled it off and ends up right in front of the camera here. It's part of the live stream. That one is wedged into the fence. <laughs> and Elliot Marks comes and grabs it, checks the fence, and says, All right, I'll go back to the box. Or the circle, I should say. I one and one. Was, he was looking at the camera a little bit there, too. Maybe. Uh, yeah, a little bit of that going down. Ball two inside as it's now two and one. Two balls and a strike. Runner down at second is Landris. The pitch from Cal on the way. Down low for ball three. Just the second three ball count that Cal has had today. Three balls, one strike. The right fielder, Wilkinson, at the plate. Looking to get to Marks, the pitch. Swing and a shot just over the second baseman, Evan Henning. Anderson up with the ball, firing home and... Stopped by Apple and no chance for Wilkinson to head to second on the throw home. What a dart by Kieran. And a good decision by Landris and the third base coach to hold him there is that would have been it probably been an out. It, w it Well, I mean, yeah. Certainly would have been close. It would have been a very, very close play. You're right there. Ball, uh, ball was hit well enough that there was a possibility that, he could, that Landris could come in and score. But just a great throw saved that. Certainly did. Karen with a cannon out from center. Now he shades towards left out of a shot to right center. Cal digs in and now looks to face off with catcher Elliot Marks. The pitch. First pitch strike from Cal. 
He had Marks behind 0-1 when Marks sent a single out into the outfield as it will be runners at the corners with one out. Cal would like nothing more than a bouncing ball to one of his in middle infielders. Nothing in one, the pitch. Runner goes down to third. Gingrich fires home. Yeah. No. That ball jumps, jumps out of the glove of Apple. He tried. It was a little high on the throw from Lane. And a fielder's choice for Marks gets him an RBI, and he's also safe at first base as Wilkinson scatters down to second. Good idea to throw it down home, get that leadoff runner, especially when they're ready to score. Ball's a little bit high, and, well, the speed of Dylan Landers didn't help Colfax at all either there. Top of the third, one nothing is Soton. Two runners on, just one out. As to the plate comes the pitcher, Renzelman, trying to give himself some run support. Strike one on the outside corner to the righty. Noah went first pitch swing and popped it right to Parker Huber to end the first inning. Two innings ago. No balls and a strike. Runners at first and second. Cranked high, deep to right field. Bodie on his horse going back. He's going to make the catch. Tagging and going to third will be Wilkinson as Parker makes the catch at second base. Marks scampers back to first. And... He didn't tag correctly. Infield umpire says that Josh did not tag on the right way. And so Wilkinson is doubled up as Parker Huber makes contact with second base. That's out number three. We'll be back for the bottom of the third next on 1450 KCLX and online at listentothegame.com. You're clear. Uh, let's do 90 again. Okay. Okay. 9-6. Well, okay. <laughs> I was I I wasn't looking. Whatever works, right? <laughs> and that was a great catch by Bodie too. Hey, what's the instant replay on that? <laughs> Scroll backwards. Come on. <laughs> That was sweet. So there'd be one left on base then, okay. Yes, Marks. I looked down to mark it, and then all of a sudden I looked back up, and they were running off the field. And I was like, hey, look at that. <laughs> Surprised we didn't get a lot of yelling behind this. Fifteen seconds. Oh, excellent. at the bottom of the order. You are back in five, four, three, two, one. We welcome you back to Asotin. It's the Bulldogs up at the plate, bottom of the third. They're now down one nothing, but thanks to the excellent play from Blake Bodie and the leaving early of Josh Wilkinson, the Bulldogs able to get out of the inning on a bizarre double play, but they'll take it. First pitch to Kellen Becker is a strike. The Bulldogs bottom third of the order. At the plate, it'll be Becker, the left fielder, the designated hitter, Miller, and the third baseman, Lane Gingrich. The 0-1 pitch from Renzelman. Slapped foul. Started fair and ended up jumping into the outfield. Sorry, not outfield, but the foul territory grass for strike two. Which we prefer. Right. We would take a single if it somehow miraculously well, yeah, jumped out would, there. I don't know if we would given enough time. That was what kind of hurt Bodie. Yes, it did. Before. The 0-2 pitch from Renzelman to Becker. Slapped foul again. This one sharply hit right in between two parked cars. <laughs> <laughs> Quite impressive sometimes how quick, how close these guys get without actually hitting them. No balls and two strikes. Well, let's see a couple of young men, a couple of preschoolers it almost looks like out there trying to chase down that ball. The 0-2 is way high, and what a snag by Marks. Ball one. Colfax still looking for their first hit. Renzelman has been very sharp in these first two innings. Certainly has. One and two, the count to Becker. Noah with a long look in, and he comes set, fires. Popped it up. It's going to get out. And also missed more cars. Way behind us, the cars parked on the street. A you ball know, and two strikes. Sorry, Randy, go ahead. You know there's a thing called a seeing eye double where you 
it yeah. misses the the catcher. Is there a oh, yeah. foul ball? <laughs> I, I almost think there is. <laughs> and one, two. Oh, what a pitch. As Kellen has to go down watching strike three as he is out number one. Third strikeout of the day for Renzelman. Two of them looking, one of them swinging, and it will be to the plate, your designated hitter, Mason Miller. Mason got the run going in the fifth. Colfax would score two runs in that inning thanks to himself and Lane Gingrich. Lane's on deck as ball one comes to Mason. Only two other times has there been a count longer than the one with Becker at two and two. The 1-0. -oh. Strike one. Renzelman playing with the zone, trying to find it, finds it on the second pitch. Bottom of the zone is always that tricky spot. It certainly has been today, the 1-1. One, one. Just outside ball two as Marks tried to move it back in. Not really trying to frame it as much as he was just trying to get control of it. Two and, two, two and one, excuse me. Lane ready to get his chance. Hoping Miller will be on in front of him. The 2-1 pitch. Wow, that was straight down the middle. All right, down the middle and a little high right in the top of the zone to Mason. Two and two. Lane down at the on-deck circle, ready to go. Two and two from Renzelman. And Miller not happy with that, but he goes down looking. Strike out number two in a row and number four overall. Well, two in a row here. Yep. Both looking. That one right at wow. the... Sweet spot at the bottom of the zone for Noah. First pitch for Lane Gingrich, third baseman. Will come from the lineup. And the pitch. All right at the knees for strike one. He's got that bottom end of the strike zone figured out now. He really has that dialed in. It's been good to him so far in the third. No balls and a strike. Renzelman the pitch. Ground ball headed just outside of the reach of the pitcher. Racing for first is Gingrich. He's not going to get there as it's dug out by Fry. From Landris to Fry for out number three, and that is going to end the third. one nothing is Soton. We come back with the middle of the order, and it'll be Mason Hur Hurlbert, the third baseman, due up next. When we come back here on 1450 KCLX and also online at listentothegame.com. You're quick. 90. Got it. Thanks. Ball one. Go, go. Go, Hurley. Fifteen seconds. Thank you. <laughs> Having trouble over there? Uh, yeah. Back in five, four. Three, two, one. Welcome back. Top of the fourth. It's Cal Gregory facing off with Mason Hurlbert. Three and one is the count. Cal gets his first strike there. The three one. Ground ball foul towards the third base side, and that's where it stops at the dugout for the Panthers. Full count now for Cal. Doing a nice job of fighting back since it was 3-0. Second full count for Cal as he did the same thing with Hunter Landers before he struck him out. Ball four. Cal worked quickly on that last pitch, did not take a whole lot of time. This is the second time that Hurlbert will reach. He reached on a double in the second, but they got stuck there after back-to-back -back K's and a pop-out to Nate. First walk for Cal. 
And just the one, two, three, four, I think the sixth the base runner. But like you said, the first walk. Still just one nothing. Pickoff attempt. What a throw by Cal and a good snag by Nate. As Nate had to jump up a little bit to get that one, but it is safe over there still as Hurlebert. It will be Judy at the plate waiting for the first pitch to come to him. Foul pitch, fouled off. Just got a piece of it was Judy. Kyle's trying to, he's moving his jaw around. Strike one on Judy, so they're going to take some time to allow Kyle to get settled and show he's okay and good to go. So Judy went down to talk to the third base coach, and now he'll come back in. Home plate umpire dusted off home plate. Kyle now trying to crack his neck a little bit. That ball hit him in the mask. With Cal's speed that he can throw yeah. and the just barely taking any speed off it off the bat of Judy, that definitely hit him square. Pickoff back to first and a good throw by Cal and a good dive back by Hurlbert. Nothing in one, still a count to Judy. Well, Hurlbert doing a good job of sliding underneath the tag. Bunt put down towards first. Cal makes the tag, ready to fire to second, not going to get it. Pickoff attempt, did he get him? Got him! Got him! What a job by Cal! Whoa! He tags out the runner, Judy, who is going down to first. Hurlbert comes off the bag at second, and Cal says, you know what kind of gun I have from behind home plate. I'm not that far away. Huber with the snag and the tag, and two outs on the board as Hunter Landers will step to the plate. Double play by Cal and Parker. <laughs> a couple surprise plays here. What a job by those two. First pitch to Landers. Cal's going to just keep it going with strike one. Of course. Huh. I wonder if he's competitive. You think so? wonder. Impressively so. He's able to keep his cool at the same time. The 0-1 pitch on the way. Popped up. This one skied away out of play for strike two. Parking a lot ball. Another one. <laughs> and off go the youngsters for the ball. Yeah. I don't know if he checked the across the street before he took off, but... He did midway. I saw him turn. <laughs> the 0-2 is low and outside for ball one, so at least one of us saw it. Saw him check. Uh, at mid... I mean, yeah, well, <laughs> at least he looked a, a little, little bit. A little bit late. He's kind of looking around. <laughs> wow. One and two with two outs. Cranked high into the air, deep to Anderson. He took a couple of steps forward, takes a couple of side steps backwards, and he makes the catch for out number three. So it looked like it could be a long inning. Ends up being a one, two, three inning. We'll be back for the bottom of the fourth on the other side of the break here on 1450 KC Lex and online at listen to the game.com. You're clear. 90. You got it. Thanks. Dang. That was a good play. I still can't believe Cal did that. I mean, I, I, was watching I shouldn't say I can't believe he did it. I was watching him threaten, but to accomplish it, not to attempt it. I get the attempt. Yeah, we thought he'd attempt it, but you know, he got I'm watching, it. I'm watching him do this. As soon as he tags, he just looks straight down there. And I'm thinking, and I wonder, is he going to do anything? And then I kind of start to look away a little bit. And then the runner is off. I sort of missed the, the one in the other inning, though, <laughs> where he didn't tag up right. Yeah. I sort of missed that one. I was blocked what? by Mark and by uh, Noah, so I definitely couldn't see it. Oh, I probably was, too, but... That's there. what I mean. That's why I didn't see it, and I looked up late. 15 seconds. Thank you. Baby. Beat it out, pal. You are back in five, four, three, two, one. We welcome you back here to Asotin. Matthew Zimmer, Randy Stickle with you. And not quite sure, Randy, hit or error, as that ball was mishandled there by the shortstop juries. It did get between them. Cal was on his horse. It's tough to tell because Cal is so fast if that would have been a yeah. single or an error, so we'll hold off judgment until now. But Colfax has their first base runner, which is big as Kyle Apple steps to the plate. We'll defer to the book book. That's right. 
Kyle with a smack. That one out into right field. That's going to go over the head. That's a no-doubt base hit. That's going to be at least two. Cal is racing around second. He's going to third. He tags. He's headed for third. Kyle's going to third. He's trying to get a triple. He is down. He is out. But Cal is safe at home as he scores from first. And the Bulldogs are tied at one with the Panthers. Kyle Apple with a shot that Wilkinson misread out in right field. And that is the first hit and the first run for sure. <laughs> That ball was hit great. That was way out there, and boy, Kyle was on his horse getting trying to get down to third, and it, a pretty impressive throw to make it close and an out. So a 1-1 tie as Parker Huber steps to the plate as Parker takes strike one. So Kyle will get credit for an RBI double being thrown out at third. Renzelman from the windup. Here comes the pitch. Outside ball one. Parker's only at time at the plate in game two. He popped out to Noah on a 1-2 pitch to end the first. The 1-1 pitch. Bouncing ball chopped towards second. Up with the ball as Landers fires to first and in time to Fry for out number two. And now Nate Ackerson will step to the plate with nobody on and try to get himself on with two outs. We know Nate's got power. Does, and he's been more selective this year on his on his swings, too. That's true. Oh. Cut on at that one, and that one was a good pitch to hit, but it ended up diving underneath his bat at the last moment, so he looked like it was going to be a perfect pitch to smack, and then it just got out of his way at the last second. A little bit of a shift put on for Nate. We'll, say that we'll give you the assignment in a second. Swinging his drive out into right field. Wilkinson going back. Making the catch, oh, almost snow coned it out of his glove as he realized he almost dropped it. He went, oh, no, wait a second. It is out number three, but the Bulldogs tied at one. Cal with a hit, Kyle with a smack, and Colfax ties it one apiece. Top of the fifth when we come back on 1450 KCLX and online at listentothegame.com. It's clear. 90. So what do you, you got get? it? Kyle. RBI double. Thrown out a third. Okay, you give him a double. Okay. Yeah, because he got to second and he was safe. Safe, okay. And the Cal. Steve, on Cal Gregory, air or hit, ask Liz what the official book says. That's what we yeah, thought. Yeah, we thought, but I. Did he touch it? I don't know if he touched it. I couldn't. It he, went between his legs. It, I thought it hit him in the arm and then it went between his legs. I'm not positive. That's what we thought. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just we always want to be sure and that's a it's a good reason why we're not on the book. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying to be entertaining too. Yeah. E six. Okay. Kind of thought. It looked like it to me, but I Oops. Fifteen seconds. Thank you. Holy cow. <laughs> Back in five, four, three, two, one. We welcome you back to the top of the fifth, and Parker Huber just made a sports center level play out at shortstop. Cal Gregory will now face off with uh, Dylan Landris. We'll get you the play on that in just a second. Here's the first pitch to Dylan. Fouled off for strike one. So second pitch of the at-bat against Carson Juries, and Carson sends it on a bouncing ball well into the hole at shortstop. Parker was ranging to his right, able to make the tough hop grab with his glove underhanded, got it, and then a bullet over to first beat the speedy juries. I don't know how it beat him, but I it did. <laughs> that throw down to first had a lot of velocity on it. And this yeah, it did. We're thankful that Tony Lewis is, is recording, so maybe we could get that off to Sports Center for SC Top 10. My goodness, what a throw by Parker. There's strike two. Two and two to Landris. Tied at one on the scoreboard. Here in the top of the fifth, the Panthers at the plate. Here comes the 2-2 two -two pitch. Smacked out into left field. Kellen coming in. It's not going to get to him. He's going to drop in front. 
And that's a base hit for Dylan Landris. He's second of the game. He has found his stroke against Cal, and that's probably due to more Cal attacking the strike zone. And Wait. Dylan just finding where he likes it. You look at the bottom of the order between these two teams, and that's going to make them stand out amongst the other teams in the league because the bottom is still very solid, and that's where some of the scoring happened in the first game against Colfax was the bottom too. That's right. Eight and nine helped win the game for the Bulldogs. It's tied at one here. Top of the fifth. Pick off by Cal over to first. Good stab by Nate and a good tag put on Landris, but it was late as Landris was able to get there safe and sound. Top of the order, Devin Fry, the first baseman, the pitch. Golfed up into the air. Nate going back. Bodie coming in and it's going to drop. Nate Bayer hands it over to second. Got him on the force out. Way to go by Nate. <laughs> Didn't wait. Let it bounce right into his hand. Realized, I have the baseball. Right over to Parker, and that's out number two on the force out. That is very aware ball. That's two plays here. One by Cal to get the pick out at second, and then also the that tag. play right there. Yeah. yeah. They're just being totally aware. Pick off. Quick pitch yeah. over and a great grab by Nate and an even better tag, but a Fry with a great dive back. We did give Devin Fry a base hit, by the way, because it did land in safely. It was just well, Landers was caught in no man's land. Fielder's choice, though? No, because he was safe before the ball before Nate made his throw. Okay, I see what you're saying. So the ball was down. It was a it was a base hit, but Landers okay. got caught. Right, right, right. Nothing in one as Wilkinson fouls the first pitch away. Cal looks in. He'll come from the stretch. The 0-1. This one golfed out to Bodie. Blake trying to find it in the dark clouds and in the light clouds, and he's able to make the grab. A lot of busy duty out there in right field for both Bodie and for the right fielder for uh, the Panthers and Wilkinson, who just flew out. We'll be back. Tied at one. Bottom of the fifth. Colfax led off by Bodie. On the other side of the break here on 1450 KCLX and online at listentothegame.com. You're clear. I left too late, so let's just do 60. Okay. Thanks. Boy. Wow. Field of choice. I don't know why. I mean, I just, you know. <laughs> it's okay. Anyway. No, I thought about it, but as soon as it hit, I was like, that would be a base hit. That counts as a hit. I didn't, then, think it, I didn't think it through all the way. Yeah. That's why I didn't go, Randy. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I see what he's thinking. I get it. Oh man. Holy cow! What a play! Seconds. Thank you. I can't believe Nate. I mean, I can because I know he's got a cannon, but. Back in five, Barehanded. four, three, two, one. Welcome back to the bottom of the fifth as Noah Renzelman just had a very awkward final pitch of his warm-up. Says, I think he was spooked by his first baseman. Devin Fry kind of came up from behind him and said something to him right as he was starting his follow-through. <laughs> and Noah went, what are you doing to me? Bottom of the fifth. And wouldn't you know it, the fifth batter in the order will lead things off for the Bulldogs. It's Blake Bodie. Tied at one, bottom five. Blake with a swing and a shot out into left center field, going back at the center fielder and left fielder. It's going to be caught wow. out there by Hunter Landris, who had to run a long way to get it. Bodie has had some bad luck, and just that was just a better play by Landris to get that one. He had to range a long ways. That usually is going to fall in the gap. but Hung up in the air, and Landris has speed to burn. You got it. So out number center one. fielders usually, they usually do. are long or quick. And Landris a little bit of both. And so, well, certainly quick. Yep, the pitch to Kieran. Smacked to the third baseman and caught on the fly by Hurlburt. Two first pitches, two outs. Well, this is quick. <laughs> Colfax not wasting any time trying to attack Noah Renzelman, but that goes right to two fielders again. It took Landris some work to get it, but he's able to get it. Becker at the plate now. So your three outfielders. For this inning, and Kellen wears it on his hip, his outside hip, so he didn't even have to turn that much, and Kellen wears it for the first hit by pitch for either side in this game. They had one earlier in game one. 
at the dish, your designated hitter, Mason Miller, who was called on strike three looking, one that he was not happy with. The first pitch to him from Renselman after Noah checks over at Becker. Two outs, one on. Down and away, ball one. Renzelman was really peppering that bottom line of the zone in the first three innings. That's what got him those two back-to-back -back strikeouts of Becker and Miller back in the third. Exactly. A ball and a strike. Becker down at first with two outs. Good long breath, and now a throw down to first is saved by Fry after it's thrown down there <laughs> by Marks. Becker was not very far away from the bag, but Marks wanted to make sure he knew, I'll try to get you if you want me to try to get you. Yeah, got to be careful. I know he's got a long stride, but you got to respect the armor marks. Certainly do. Two and one, the pitch count, and the pitch is on the way and skyward out towards right, shallow right center field, and it's on a slide and a grab and on one knee. It's caught by Hunter Landris. We'll be back with the top of the sixth, tied at one here on 1450 KCLX and online at listentothegame.com. You're clear. 90. Did you say? 90, sorry. Six pitches there. Jeez. And that includes getting a runner on. Because <laughs> it was on the first pitch. I know. Three first pitch things happened. And then three Can't pitches roll. to pop out. Yeah. So that's 48. It's a cute dog. But an annoying bark. <laughs> yeah right well, I, have a, I have a neighbor that I don't know what their dog is but whenever they're out of the house it barks like crazy and I'm going alright I need to warn you guys that this your dog is annoying <laughs> mm, yep oh <sighs> oh my gosh my roommate used to have a German Shepherd, and it would bark whenever he wasn't there. And I was like, "Dude, I'm here. Don't don't yell at everybody else. I'm here." Second. Uh, thank you, EJ. Sorry. You are back in five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Welcome back. Top of the sixth here in Asotan. Tied at one. It's the Bulldogs and the Panthers as Elliot Marks takes two balls starting out on his plate appearance. He got a single back in the first, a fielder's choice in the third that brought a run home. That finds the zone for strike one. Again, we're tied at one. Colfax got their run in the fourth after the Panthers got theirs in the third. How is that not a strike? Hmm. And the count at three and one, three and two. Three and one. That's what I have it at. Looked like Mark said three and two. Not entirely sure. Yeah. All right. The pitch. That's a strike, and Marks didn't like it, and then he'll get his bat back. <laughs> Everybody's confused. Full count. All right. All right. I want my Okay. Payoff. R review. Ball four. All right. Now that that's over, <laughs> let's go to Noah Renzelman. Noah has had the opposite of his day on the mound. He has popped out twice in this game on three pitches. He popped out to shortstop and popped out to Bodie, the pitch. Ground ball headed toward the hole. Parker with a stab. Lost uh, the control of it and reaching first is Renzelman. I don't know how to grade that one. You drop it. Well, that's true. That's an E6. By the way, earlier, I don't know if we mentioned it on the air or not. We talked about it in the live stream, heard it. Uh, Renzelman with an error. Or sorry, not Renzelman with an error earlier. It was... Uh, the shortstop. Oh, yeah, it was. It was uh, Drury's with an error earlier. Um, Cal's spot. That's a bunt put down foul by Hurlbert. That's strike one. Ackeson immediately yells out. It was either Nate or Kyle screamed out bunt, and Nate came charging down to first, and Evan Henning went excellent to go to cover it at first. 
Cal given the chance to walk off because Hurlburt took a long time to just step back in the box. Cal was set for a long time before Mason came in the box. Nate ready at first, the pitch. Ground ball headed towards short. Parker over to second, now to first. Evan couldn't get the ball off. Did he get it yet? No. Could have been a double play. Instead, they say no. But it does get one out and leaves a double play option open. Marks gets to third. Renzelman retired on the 6-4 flip for out number one. Mason was trying to throw. Sorry, Evan, Evan Henning was trying to throw, and Evan was blocked completely by Renzelman. Hurlburt gets down to first on a fielder's choice. At the plate, Taron Judy. He's had a tough day. He's struck out, and he also was part of that spectacular double play from Cal where he tagged Judy up the first baseline and right. then fired down to first to get Hurlburt, who was off the bag at second. That helped Cal get his 1-2-3 rating in the fourth. Tied at one with runners at the corners. The pitch. Big cut and a miss by Judy. Taron put a huge swing on that. He was trying to bring all three runs home. That's including himself. No balls and a strike. Taron still outside the box, so on plate umpire putting his hand up to Cal. Now he steps in. Runners at the corners with the catcher Marks and the third baseman Hurlbert, the pitch. Ball up, and that one's going to score Marks as Cal slipped off the mound. Marks is able to score on what was supposed to be a sacrifice. It ended up straight up in the air. Cal lost his footing. Judy is able to get it on a base hit instead. And so the runners advance to first and second, so Judy does get credit for a base hit. Mark scores. It's 2-1, to one, top of the sixth. I still have yet to put that on the board. It will be again 2-1 for the Panthers. Two runners on, one man out. At the plate, Hunter Landers. Clocked foul over the right side. Strike one. So two runners are still on. Mm -hmm. One comes in, mm -hmm. all on no hits. No, that was a hit. Taron gets a hit. Oh, Taron. Taron gets a hit, but I mean. The run came in on no. The run scored without reaching on a hit. Right. It so was a hit by pitch. No, sorry, a walk. A, walk. a fielder's choice Field. and an error all in there. Yes. Cut on a miss, throw down to third. Way beat him. What a job by Kyle Apple, and a better job even to go get the tag, Lane Gingrich, as Hurlburt was trying to retreat as he realized, oh, I am not going to get there. And there was no way he could get back, and then plus you had... Because Judy took second, so he Judy's really couldn't go back. on second, so... Two strikes to land, just trying to end the inning here. The 0-2. Oh, cut on and missed. That was up and in. We'll take it, though. Colfax, bottom of the sixth. Led off by Lane Gingrich, who just made that spectacular play on the throwdown by Kyle Apple. 2-1 to one of Soton when we come back on 1450 KCLX and online at listentothegame.com. You're clear. 60. You got it. Thanks. I, I, I hadn't written down the Judy hit. Ah, okay. <laughs> How's it go? Well, there's no hits. You're like, no, you're just not. And I'm like, yes, there was. I don't know. There's no hits. <laughs> And then you go, well, there was one by Turner Judy. I look over there and I go, oh, yeah. because I wrote down nothing. <laughs> I was watching the play because there was a couple spectaculars. Uh, Holy Kyle Apple, Batman. All right, wait a second. Pitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eight. <laughs> ten seconds. Thank you. Back in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back. Bottom of the sixth here in Asotin. Matthew Zimmer and Randy Stickle here with you as it's Colfax trailing by a run after Marks got on with a walk. Renzelman reached on an error. Hurlbert reached on a fielder's choice, and then Judy brought him home on a base hit bunt. That just sent Cal falling to the ground because he just slipped off the mound. So Lane Gingrich will step to the plate. Lane helped get things going for the Bulldogs in the fifth with help from Mason Miller in the last game. Let's see if Lane can get things started for them in the sixth. First pitch from Renzelman. Whoa. Inside, and Lane went chasing. Strike one. Took a big cut on that one. Yes, he did. He was sending that one for the fence. No balls and a strike. The pitch from Renzelman on the way. 
Ground ball, foul towards third. Lane charging. No throw from the third baseman, and that's a base hit for Lane Gingrich. He's on first, and the top of the order comes to the plate in the form of your pitcher, Cal Gregory. We talked about this before. Kind of a soft field a little bit. That ball died going down to third base, leaving the speedy Lane Gingrich opportunity to get down to first. No chance for Mason Hurlburt to throw no. out Lane, well, as Randy risk. mentioned. It would have been a risk if yeah. he had done it. Because he also didn't look like he was very set when it started. So if he had thrown it, that one could have ended up in the Colfax dugout or up the right field line. Which should have been okay. For us, yeah. <laughs> no, you don't want to see. One on and nobody out. Cow to the plate. Scored the only run of the game for the Bulldogs earlier after he reached on an error. Strike one. Renzelman, a right-handed pitcher, facing the right-handed bat of Cal Gregory. Is it count one and one? No, it is 0 and 1. That's what I thought. There we go. It got fixed. <laughs> no balls and a strike. <laughs> the, the scoreboard. Renzelman set from the stretch. The pitch. Cal right back up the middle. It's off Renzelman. And it goes over towards third base. Cal is safe at first, and Lane is safe at second. So kick save and no beauty this time as it's Cal reaching on a base hit that awkwardly hits off the leg of Renzelman. Couple awkward plays here. The time is called. They're going to check on Noah. As well, they should. Marks is at least going to go check on him. Well, they're going to communicate too. Now they got two runners on with nobody out. Noah kind of looked at Elliot and he goes, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. This is fine. Yeah. So Kyle Apple will step to the plate. Two on. Nobody out. Gingrich down to second. Cal is over at first. The corner infielders in on the infield grass. The middle infielders near the outfield grass. The shift kind of on for Parker. The second baseman is way off to the right side, closer, way closer to first than he is to second. First huh. pitch to Kyle Apple as he shows bunt. Pulls it back. Lane is caught off base. Dives. Safe. Slid under. I don't know. How, how in the world how? Lane got back as he kind of scrunches his helmet back to his head like, I don't know how I did that. <laughs> that was a quick throw as he was way off. Marks nearly got him. Oh, man, that was a terrific throw, but he must have just been flat. Are they going to? Oh, they're going to ask if Kyle came out of the box. Down at first, Wayne Gregory. And it's going to be. So I I neither caught know. it. I think it was just. Just not seen, so can't make a call. You can't. You didn't see. So 0 and 1 for Kyle. So I don't make many calls. <laughs> 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 Got it. <laughs> Runners at first and second. Kyle pulls the bat back to his shoulder. Renzelman long look in, gets the sign from Marks. The 0 1 pitch with two on. Look back at second. The pitch. Kyle fouls it away for strike two. Kyle down 0 and 2. If you notice, Lane did not take off as much. No, no, he did <laughs> not. He learned his lesson. <laughs> There's a freshman. He said, oh, wow, that catcher's got a really good arm. I don't want to test that. That's enough luck for me. No balls, two strikes. The first baseman, Frino, goes behind the runner, Gregory, while Hurlburt stays over on the grass at third. Nothing in two. Lane and Cal take their leads. Inside ball one. Close call, and... Kyle's able to stave off that one by watching it come inside. With two, with 0-2 count, that's a tough one. I can't believe he Man. held off on that. That was impressive I, work. I, he is way more patient <laughs> than both of us. <laughs> one and two, the pitch, way up and in. Kyle gives the stop sign out to Lane as Lane goes. He goes, no, no, no. He he caught it. Go back to second. Two balls, two strikes, tying run at second base. Nobody out. Kyle digs back in. Renzelman comes set from the stretch. The 2-2 pitch. Kyle with a swing and a drive deep into center field. That one going back, going back. It's going to go off his glove. Trying to get to third is Lane. Cal has got to have to hold off. He's right behind Lane. Gingrich coming in to score. So is Cal. They're going to score two. Oh, my god! And the Bulldogs take a 3-2 lead. Cal was behind Lane Gingrich by maybe half a step. <laughs> And the Bulldogs score two within half a second. Two RBI double, Kyle Apple. <laughs> Kyle Apple gives the thumbs up down there at second base. 
Nice hit by Kyle Apple, but Kyle <laughs> Gregory. Lane waited, and Cal was like, go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I know you can't shove somebody down there, but Cal was about as shoving Lane down there as he could get. You know, no throw man. from the shortstop, and Mark right, was furious right. as it's still yeah, nobody it, out. It was held. The ball was held as they thought they could have gotten one of them. Well, Cal came rounding around third, and he, again, he's maybe half a step. He was so close to Lane, I thought he was going to step on the back of his shoe. First pitch to Parker, into the gap. That one's going to get through. Kyle is going to be given the stops, and now he's giving the go-ahead. Kyle rounds third. Going to second is Huber. He's going to get there. Ball keeps bounding away, and Colfax takes a two-run lead. Parker Huber with an RBI single, and he gets to second on the throw in the mishandle out in left field. Oh, and the <laughs> Colfax bats are coming alive here right now. Three runs in this inning, and what? Still no out? Four straight base hits. One by Lane, one by Cal, a double and two RBI by Kyle, and now an RBI by Parker Huber. And a couple... Unique throws by Soton, which has been solid defensively. First pitch to Nate. The ball outside. Ball one. Oops. Boy, Nate will try to avoid the right field. And right fielder Josh Wilkinson as he's popped it out twice to him. One ball and no strikes. Here comes the pitch. Oh, Big cut by <laughs> Nate. He wanted to send another home run over the fence. <laughs> Well, just... 354 down the right field line, 350 down the left field line. No, no number out in center, but deeper than those it's two numbers. The, yeah, it's <laughs> the 0-1 is fouled off by Nate. Sorry, the 1-1 is fouled off by Nate. It's one and two. So how about the Bulldogs? Four straight base knocks, three singles, and a double. One-two. Is the count. Righty lefty matchup. Nate the lefty. The pitch. Sends this one over the second baseman. Coming to third is Parker. Huber giving the stop sign. Nate giving the stop sign at first, and there's runners at the corners. Still nobody out. Nate Ackeson keeps the line moving as here comes Blake Bodie. Colfax got more hits in this inning. As they've had in the rest of the game. Yeah, I, I mean that's yep. not really a shock. <laughs> when he got, well, what is when it? we went hitless for three innings, <laughs> and we're here in the sixth. Not, you're right. Not surprising. I'm gonna have to check to see. No, oh, that's not more hits than they had in the first game. No. First hit came in the fourth, on the double by Apple that scored Cal. That tied it at one. Marks got the Panthers on a second run in the. Sixth, just a half inning ago. He reached and then he scored. And then Colfax said, to heck with that, and has scored <laughs> three runs. Exactly. And they're having on now five base hits in a row. One of the assistant coaches and Marks and Renzelman are having a too long of a conversation. conversation. So Mark our, went out there, the umpire, and said, yep. it's enough. Break it up. That's enough. Let's play ball. Talk to me or talk, don't talk at all. <laughs> right, there you go, <laughs> boom. Four to two, Colfax leads, two runners on. They're at first and third. It's Huber at third and Nate Ackeson at first with Blake Bodie at the plate. Blake watches ball one. Nate gets a throw down from Marks, and Nate was not that far off the bag, but again, Marks just showing him, you want to test me, I can, <laughs> I can play ball. And Colfax has learned that the hard way a couple of times. Lane Gingrich fortunate enough to not be caught off. Earlier in this inning. Through a little magic. I'm not sure how, but. The 1-0 from Renzelman. Bottom of the zone strike for Noah as he finds the zone against Blake. First time in this game, Bodie hasn't gone first pitch swing. Again, that was because the first game, he just felt like he, he couldn't buy a pitch to hit. And all the ones he didn't almost ended up as a strike three in a spot he didn't agree with. It's now 1-1 one and one with runners at the corner. Still nobody out. Noah comes set. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Low as that one's ball two. And Nate, not necessarily testing marks, but maybe testing to see if he can make him angry because he's getting just enough farther out, and then he goes, I don't know. Ah, ha, ha. Yeah, I don't know if he's <laughs> just trying to be a distraction. That's trying, what I'm thinking he's trying doing. Trying to bait him a little bit, but. The 2-1 pitch. 
Oof. Down and away, and it's called strike two. All right. Again, the Bulldogs, five straight hits, three runs have scored. The other two batters that haven't are still ending at first and third. Renzelman with a long look in from the stretch. He's getting the sign from Marks. Bodie is ready. Renzelman comes set. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch. Up high and away for ball three. So Bodie works a full count. Randy, this is the first three ball count that Renzelman has had all game. You know, till today, Bodie's done a good job of getting those. Yeah. Not, not quite as strong today. As for getting those yeah, calls as for getting those to go calls, his way. Yeah. Payoff. Bodie right towards second base. Up with the ball, Landris fires to first, trying to get to second. Bodie reaches on a fielder's choice. He's safe. And Huber scores run number five. So Nate is retired on a 4-6 flip from the second baseman to the shortstop. But Bodie reaches on a fielder's choice and gets a run batted in as he will stand down at first. And he does not allow a double play. So still only one out. Still, well, yeah, that is the first out. That's right. And another run scores for Colfax. 5-2 is your score with Karen Anderson at the plate. Strike one. Kieran's had a tough day. He's gone first pitch swing and second pitch swing. He popped out to the pitcher and he lined out to the third baseman. It was a beautiful catch by Hurlbert, but also a rocket from Kieran. The 0 1. Chopping, high chopping, trying to beat it out. Nobody's covering first. Safe at first is Anderson. Fry left to try to help get the, bo the ball. Landris did not realize what was going on. He was not out over to first in time, and Kieran beats out the throw. Surprising play there, as you know, like you said, everybody pulled away. Nobody realized that that second, that first wasn't being covered with a runner going down, Bodie going down to second. Blake and Kieran both safe. So the two outfielders and at their spot on base with their third hey, outfield friend in Kellen Becker at the plate. Surprising plays here, this inning. Pitches in the bottom corner for strike one, on the outside, Kellen was called on a strike three in a similar pitch that he got caught looking in the third inning. Nothing in one. He also got hit by a pitch and was stranded back in the last inning. The 0-1. Just got a piece of it. He wanted every bit of that one. It was running inside and it came inside late. Both runners wanted him to get it too because they did a little bit of a dart. but They kind of they, they had that flinch of oh! Okay, and then turtle went backwards. So it's 0-2. So Miller really wanted to give the ball off to the home plate umpire, and he did not see him. Well, Nothing in two. Two on no, and one out. The pitch. Callum was just trying to get a piece of it after he had started his swing. That ball is coming back sort of across the street. It's hit the curb at a weird angle and actually started coming back towards us. So count stays at 0-2. Becker kept himself alive with that swing. No balls, two strikes. Two on, one out. Colfax leading by three in the bottom of the sixth. The pitch. Ball one. How he held off that one, I'm not sure, but a great job by Becker. Evidently. Yeah, I don't know how he <laughs> held off on that. Him and Kyle Apple. He one. had one that he held off on earlier. To, yes, he did. That kept this inning going. Before he got the double. Yep. Which is fun to say. The pitch. Swing and a drive, foul. Ooh, man, that is identical to what Kellen did with the first two games of the season here in Asotin against Weezer and Grangeville. He hit so many foul balls down the left field side that we were starting to think that that was what we were going to see all season long. And then he, what did he do? He cranked a home run down the left field side back yes. in Reardon. In Reardon, right. A ball and two strikes. Second home run of the year for the Colfax Bulldogs. At the time, you're right. Kellen fouls this one off. Trying to pull it. Count stays one and two. Colfax has now hit four home runs overall. A one-two count, yet this is going to be his eighth pitch. Tells you how many times Kellen, Kellen has fouled off. That's quite a bit. Anderson at first, Bodie at second. Colfax by three, the one-two pitch from Renzelman. Long breath in the pitch. Chopped. It's fair. Uh-huh. Becker is thrown out. He thought it bounced off of home plate, so he thought it was going to be foul. And then it ended up bouncing and landing right in the infield grass in front of the catcher, Marks, 
and the first and the pitcher, excuse me, Renzelman. And so it does move the runners up, but it is out number two. On the one three throw down to first, and now the ninth batter of the inning, Mason Miller steps to the plate as Lane Gingrich hoping to get a second chance at the plate in the inning. Well, believe it or not, I never thought in the game against the Sultan we'd pitch around. I agree. I hit, hit around, excuse me. I agree. Pitch. Strike one to Mason. So Mason falls behind in the first pitch, 0-1. Miller was called out on strike three in the third, and then he popped out to the center fielder earlier. That was in the last inning, as a matter of fact. The 0-1 from Renzelman runners to second and third. The pitch. Clobbered high into the air, out to left center field. Hard to feel this one's going that. back. This one is caught on a run by Hunter Landris. That's a Colfax, five straight base hits, three run score. Excuse me, four run score. It's 5 2 Bulldogs when we come back for the top of the seventh on 1450 KCLX and online at listen to the game.com. You're clear. Uh, 60. You got it. Thank you. So Miller's hit to center field twice in back to back innings. Yeah. Okay, one, two, Wow. 31. Pitches? Pitches in that inning. That's it? I should be, I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. That's nine batters, but that's averaging well, just over three. There was a couple that were second pitch hits. Second. Oh, that's true. Thank Park, you, EJ. Park, Parker was, and, and so was Kieran. And Cal. Cal, and then Lane. Oh, yeah, Lane was five, two. Five, four. Three, two, one. Welcome back to the top of the seventh. Colfax by three, trying to wrap up this doubleheader. They'll take on Juries, Landris, and Fry. Pitch from Cal is outside for ball one. Carson Juries, your shortstop at the plate. The pitch. Strike one, bottom of the zone. Carson's had a tough day. He popped out to Nate, and he was thrown out by Parker Huber on a spectacular Sports Center level play. That one is shot foul by about seven or eight feet. Strike two. Carson Jury's nearly got that one to the barrel, Randy. It just was just far enough away that he pushed the bat a little too far, and it was almost closer to his hands. Oh. But that was a decent pitch. That he almost sent out as a. What do we? We're waiting for the ball to get retrieved, and then the ball boy for Colfax to get back in the dugout so that he wouldn't get hit with the ball. The one-two pitch. Cal nearly threw himself out of his shoes on that one as it's now two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Jury's trying to help Asoten get the inning started off right. Colfax and Cal trying to start the inning off with an out. The two-two. Ground ball headed towards Parker. A couple of bounces. Huber lifts it. Fires in time. Good play by Parker. Huber over to first to get Juries for his second consecutive at bat. Parker has retired. Carson Juries, his fellow shortstop. <laughs> that always makes you feel funny when you're when you you know center fielders hit out to center field. Yeah. I mean that it happens quite a bit to be honest with you. It certainly does. It's still always interesting when it does to me. It is. It is very interesting. Oh good. I'm glad you agree. Uh, you know, <laughs> strike one to Dylan Landris. It's kind of fun things to talk about. Yeah, almost as fun as getting the uh, four runs in the last inning. Totally agree with that. Strike two called against Landris. Dylan has had a good day. He's reached twice. He was thrown out at second on a weird call, but he was thrown out over there. And 0-2 pitch, golfed out into left field, and it's going to drop by a bounce right in front of Kellen. Becker's going to get it back in. And that's a base hit for Dylan Landris. He's three for three, Randy. He has been impressive from the plate against Cal. <laughs> He's got to figure it out. He certainly has. He's the only one really to really figure out Cal. Again, he's three for three. He's got a run scored and a stolen base. He's on it first with Devin Fry, top of the order, back up at the plate. First pitch it is a strike to Fry. Devin has popped out to. The first baseman in the center fielder, then he got a base hit in his last at-bat in the fifth where he was stranded. Pick off! Not good. 
in terms of it was dug out by Nate, but it was safe at first. Dylan Landers, good attempt by Cal, the 0-1. Golf down to center field, coming on Kieran. Oh, and he got it! Little Spider-Man action out there by Kieran Anderson as he put all of his length into that one. He came in first, the ball got on him in a hurry, and you're, you're taught to go forward first before you go backwards, just in case. He went forward just enough that he really had to reach for that one, but he got it, out number two. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to. I know he's tall and he's long, he's got arms, but he must have better springs than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly got up for that one. Cl he did. Climbed the ladder, as they say. Wow. Strike one against Josh Wilkinson. Josh reached uh, on an odd play back in the third. He got all the way to third. Uh, third base before he was thrown out at sorry he got thrown out at second base because he didn't tag yeah that that was one of the more unusual we had a few unusual we have had a few unusual plays also he's popped out to the outfield once to kellen becker and left and once to uh blake Bodie and right it's a 1-1 count to josh here comes the pitch Boy. what a pitch by cal as josh put everything into that swing and the ball just didn't find the bat one and two cal will try to End it here. Runner at first is Landris. A 1-2 pitch coming to Wilkinson. It's on the way. Strike three called. Wow. Cal got him looking on the outside corner. That's been plaguing both teams today. And the Bulldogs win and advance to 10-1 and one on the season. 5-2. to two. Colfax comes away with a victory in... Game two of the doubleheader after they came away with the winning game one, three to one. We'll come back and we'll break it down next of the doubleheader. You've been listening to Colfax Baseball, and we'll have the post game next here on 1450 KCLX and also online at listen to the game.com. You're clear. I assume we have a lot of commercials to hit. Actually, we don't. Okay. How many do we have? Good. And what How I mean about is three minutes worth? Okay, let's do three minutes then. Okay. Sweet. Oh. 